So I was watching my local 7-Eleven burn down today when I saw a shirt or something in the bushes. And when I walked over, I saw it was a Walmart employee uniform that someone just left there. So I decided to try it on, even though it had a stain on it that looked like, um, milk. <laughs> but that's when I got the idea to go to Walmart and see how long it would take them to notice that I don't work there. And I was just walking around in Walmart as a fellow employee. So the first thing I did was give myself a good employee discount on a few things I found. And then I was looking for something to do when I saw the phone for announcements just sitting there. And I was super nervous, but I picked it up and said, Attention shoppers, everything is free for the next hour. And then I hung up and panicked and tried to find a getaway. And I saw the employees only area. So I went inside and it led me to an elevator, which eventually led me out the main entrance. And when I finally made it out of there, the security was outside with its flashing lights. So I quickly took off my uniform, threw it in the bushes and ran. Hello, I spent a week in Japan only eating out of vending machines and I ate stuff like fish in a bottle. Uh, let's try it. You are technically only supposed to drink the soup around it, but I wanted to free Little Nemo. But you have to break the bottle open, and the soup was alright. But I was more invested in sending Little Buddy back to his home. Just kidding, he clogged my toilet and I can't poop. Next, I went to a bread vending machine. Where you could get this bread in a can. This is great if you've ever had the intrusive thought to eat the insulation out of your walls. Next was a banana vending machine, which is just bananas. Ha! <laughs> oh, fuck. Next, I got this vitamin C drink, which tasted good, but turned my pee green. And the cap got stuck to my finger, and I had to pry it off before it turned purple. But then I found an edible bug vending machine. So I bought a pack for $14, even though they live in my bed for free. And surprise, surprise, they were nasty. But as I ate them, this man walked in on me eating bugs outside his restaurant. Um, I, and I am too scared to ever go back to Japan. I was buying some pot, some green, if you know what I mean. I wanted a green pot because I have a plant that lives in a Ziploc. But I came across this perfect pot at the thrift shop, except it had the name Patricia on it. And I thought, oh, a pot named Patricia. It must be empty, right? Not. After I bought the pot and walked off the block, I saw Patricia was still in the pot that I had bought and realized it wasn't a pot, but an urn. When Patricia died, she was burned and then put in this urn and then got donated at this Goodwill location in Woodburn. But she was worth more than the $5 bill that I paid with at the till. I took her home and looked her up and saw she came from Brazil and worked at a bar called the Sawmill in Jackson. And on her profile was this beautiful hill. And it might be overkill, but I thought Patricia should rest there and not in the potting section at a Goodwill. So I picked her up, plopped her on my bike's sill, and rode my bike to the base of a hill and then pedaled to the very damn top of that hill where I would spread her ashes with all of my will. And Patricia took a little bit of a spill. Today I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop, so obviously I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire colony the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer, and I was like, that's strange, they're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around, and at first it seemed like a really expensive furniture store, and I was like, damn, these Amish are gonna be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts and and paintings of Jesus, and then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet, and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate, and then a Queen's Gambit board game, which- oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and... Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found out they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me and let me know if I should drive up there and join. Okay, here's how I finessed my way onto the red carpet at the MTV Movie Awards. So I got invited and flown out to LA and went straight to the awards venue, but I was a day early. And they were still setting up, but it was so cool and they've signs for where every celebrity would sit and that's when i saw my twin noah centineo's chair i sat in his seat so noah and i have officially touched our butts on the same chair oh and i saw bozzy's too then i went outside and they were rolling out the red carpet and setting up giant popcorn tubs made of gold and then i walked down it i don't know why i looked like that but then the next day was the awards and i was so nervous to go on the red carpet but i got over my anxiety which was skyrocketing and i got my picture taken and i looked so awkward why did i smile like debbie ryan and then just walk away so then i wandered around the red carpet walking past actors that i've literally looked up to for years i don't know who let me act like this but i look like a a rat that got hit by a train but then the show was starting so i went inside and i found my seat and there was this really really yummy popcorn and then Dwayne the freaking rock johnson did a performance then walked right past me and then lizzo did too and walked right past me again and then i really had to pee so i went inside but then when i went back in they were already filming and i walked in front of the camera <laughs> we're out of time but i vlogged the whole thing if you want to go see it the link to my youtube is in my bio
I was collecting celebrities' DNA at Coachella from leftover water bottles on the ground and waiting outside their makeup trailers until they left so I could see if they left behind any DNA on cans or bottles. Because I wanted to try cloning them, because my rich uncle cloned his dog three times and now he has four little sparkies because that's legal for some reason. But anyways, I managed to get this can from Post Malone's trailer as well as a bloody tissue. And when I got back from the festival, I carefully swabbed the DNA and preserved it with isoamyl alcohol and then went back to the website that my uncle used. But I remembered it's like a war crime to clone humans. But I thought I could sneak some Post Malone DNA into the test kit and pretend it's a dog to see what happens. And a few weeks later, I got a call from the uh, United Nations Human Rights Department, but last time I fell for something like that, it was when I got an email saying that I was discovered to be the new Prince of India, and all they needed was my, so my social uh, security number. And then it uh, turns out they were scammers and illegally changed my last name to Dover. B ben Dover. Anyways, I have a live feed of the little embryos as they grow. Look at little baby Post Malone. Goo goo da da. Goo 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 da da da. Today I woke up on Mr. Beast's 35 foot tall inflatable minion that I tried blowing up the night before with my lung, but my asthma kicked in and I passed out. But anyways, last week he was like, Hey Ben, can you make me the world's largest minion? But I hung up on him, cause he's not despicable enough, he's like the opposite, he's like philanthropicable. But he called back and I was like, he really is despicable. And I agreed to do it and ever since then I have been making sure this minion is perfect. So I got the whole factory to line up and take turns blowing it up so I wouldn't be the only one passing out. And I tried to fashion together a giant suit to fit him, but I ran out of fabric and... But finally he was ready. The only problem was when I opened my trunk and tried to fit his body in it, which usually it can fit a few of those, he didn't fit. So I had to ship him in a truck, but I wanted to be along for the journey, so I snuck in while the back door was open and rode in that boy across America until we finally stopped and I opened the door and... Hey. Uh, I, I got your minion. Uh, just put it over there. Okay. joining some random Zoom calls today so I could make some friends. But after accidentally joining an Amish call in the Zoom, I accidentally joined the Zoom call with this guy in it. And I was like, who's that? Until I realized I had joined a call with Dr. Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president. And then I looked in the mirror to make sure I didn't look like a cockroach. And then as soon as I looked presentable, I grabbed my laptop and brought it out to the living room. And then I joined the call and I was like, how are you, Dr. Fauci? And he said, I'm good, Ben. Nice to be with you. How are you doing? And then I froze and tried to think of like a question about COVID or something. And that's when I remembered my uncle texting me out of the blue saying that there's pee in the vaccine. Vaccine. So I was like, let me set the record straight. So I asked him, the vaccine looks like it's just a few drops of water. And I feel like a lot of people don't really know what's actually going on in there. You, what vaccine did you get, Ben? I have Moderna. I got Moderna too. So, okay. what, so when you and I got injected, what happened? It went into the muscle. The body recognizes the protein of that virus and neutralizes it. I feel like that was like a, a crash course in a PhD in biology, but <laughs> it all made sense. I, I figured it out. Well, you heard it from the White House and bed of the week. The vaccines are safe. Go get it, please. Today, I traveled to Trump Town to get a gift for my friend that I hate, because if you've ever had a friend that's obsessed with you and asked what you're getting them for Christmas, you can just show you don't care about them by doing a deep dive on their Instagram and maybe find out they've been wanting to learn how to play the trumpet. So to show you don't care, you could go to a Trump store instead of a trumpet store to buy some Trump merch so that they A, think that you don't actually care about their interests, I don't, so you can say, oh, I, I thought you liked Trump, and to double down that you don't give a damn about them, point B, they think you're a terrible person because they'll think you like Trump. So look through the Trump store as a minority and try not to get shot and then get them like a trump hat and a little trump squishy head and pay for it with photocopied money so you're not actually giving them real money and then after they finish telling you that the vaccine was made by the illuminati box it up in designer packaging so that they think it's going to be expensive and then drop a half eaten banana in it so it molds and then walk over to the post box and set it on through and that person will never talk to you again M mary whatever so TikTok sent me a skateboard and I decided to ride it down my stairs so I could see a Juice World concert. And you're probably wondering how did I get one? And it's cause I used my Russian hacking skills to make me the most followed person by changing my follow count from 6.7M to a B. To the B, M to the B, M M M. Anyways, with a brick, it didn't come with wheels. And I was like, what the heck? I was supposed to hang it on my wall. But I have trauma from last week when my stop sign fell off my wall and almost chopped me up in a cooked sashimi. So I decided maybe I can ride it down the stairs, but I don't want to meet Michael Jackson. Wait, never mind. Michael Jackson's in hell. <laughs> So I put on my frog costume from Halloween, but not only is it a frog costume, it's an inflatable frog costume. So I started at the top of my stairs and I slowly nudged myself forward until I wrote it down and... So anyways, now the board is snapped in half, but I got this cool new bruise, so if anyone could give it a fun name, that would be greatly appreciated.
I recently mentioned that I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off of the black market and the TikTok blew up, which is not what I wanted because now the FBI is gonna be on my ass. Cause this morning I was watching how snails make love when my MacBook camera turned on and usually it's just my FBI agent checking in to see if I'm doing okay mentally. But this time they messaged me and said, did you really buy human organs off of them? And I said, no, you dumb walnut brain doo-doo head. It's a TikTok. When have I ever made a serious TikTok? It's all just a joke cause I'm painfully bored with too much time on my hands and I just write down whatever comes to my brain and somehow people enjoy it. It makes me really happy. But then I read one hate comment and it ruins my whole week. And then my FBI agent told me, go to therapy. And I was like, damn, you're right. And I went to bed. Don't buy organs on the black market, or your FBI agent will make you go to therapy. I woke up in the middle of the night wanting a Travis Scott burger. So I drove over to McDonald's to get one and I ordered it. Do you have the Travis Scott burger? Oh, yeah, we do. But then after I ordered it, I pulled up to the window and they shoved a Q tip in my nose. And that's when I realized I had sleep driven to a COVID testing site. And then she handed me a sheet of paper that told me I was positive for thick butt cheek syndrome. My tires popped from the weight of my behind. And when I managed to squeeze out of the car, I looked and saw how bad my big badonkadonk was. If I were to do the WAP dance right now in this street, the gravitational force would pull the sun so detrimentally close to the earth that everything would catch on fire and the earth would split in half. So I drove home and I went inside and hid in my basement so I could never cause an apocalypse. But I was missing something. I still never got my Travis Scott burger. So I grabbed some candles and I began a ritual to summon Travis Scott himself. I said out loud, Travis Scott, are the candles burning, my lord? And then all of a sudden, he appeared out of thin air and said two words. It's free! I was marking where I want my plastic surgeon to work on. So that I can look like Humpty Dumpty and someone will push me off a wall and put me on my misery. When in that moment, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. So I ran downstairs and opened the door and saw there was a letter waiting for me. So I picked it up and I looked at it and it was inviting me to go to Vegas and get my face filled by someone named Dr. Phil. And I was like, is Alexa listening to me? Because I don't know I want that. And then I did the most logical thing and hopped in an Uber to the airport and got on a flight to Las Vegas. The lady next to me on the flight was dancing, but then she saw me recording her and it was really awkward. Anyways, I landed. And I headed to the plastic surgeon's office and I had to walk down this really dark hallway and when I arrived I let myself in I was walking through the office looking for the plastic surgeon when out from behind a curtain emerged the doctor Phil He was breathing really heavily and I asked him if he was a real doctor and then he looked angered And then he started chasing me and I ran as fast as I could jumping over furniture to escape him because I didn't want dr Phil to fill my face ah! So I've never actually told anyone this but me and Zendaya have been secretly dating for the past three months But she started getting really overprotective and told me that she ever catched me watching Jesse again, she'll light my dog on fire. So I did what I had to do and I ended it. Anyways, I hate being single. So I went on the one secret website where all celebrities go to find love. I grabbed my laptop and logged on to Omegle. The first person I got paired with was this Indian man and I convinced him I was Baby Ario. My name is Baby Ario. I don't know if you've heard of me. Baby Ario. Okay, you're a TikToker. My name is Arun. You could be ba my hey, Baby Arun. I could be Baby yeah. Ario and you could be Baby Arun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Then after that, I asked this random dude for his hand in marriage and your hand in marriage, please. Instead of my hand, can I give my foot? Yeah, that's even better. Can I see your foot? Dude, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're like, I'm a double amputee. Are you serious? Crap, run of time, but if you want to see what happened next, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. Today, I was sick of feeling lazy, so I went on the treadmill, walked three steps, and then got off. But as I was folding it up, my anemia hit, and I couldn't hold the treadmill anymore, and it collapsed on me. When I woke up, my arm was trapped underneath the metal, and I couldn't get out. My dog is too stupid to help me, and I couldn't even call for help because my phone was just out of reach, and I turned Siri off because last time I used her, well... Hey, Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no! The only thing within reach was a minion figurine and a fork with a grape on it. First, I ate the grape because like, mmm, grapes are delicious. But then it hit me what needed to be done. I put the minion in my mouth so that I wouldn't scream. Then I grabbed the plastic fork and I took my arm up. Uh, wait, does that say emergency release latch? As in like, I did I did not have to sever my, my arm. <laughs> I did not need to cut off my arm. Today I woke up sad and single for the 7,347th day of my life. As I got up to drink my water bottle full of stale Red Bull, I thought, no, this ends today. Okay, here goes nothing. Dear Zendaya, you don't know me, but I love you. This is my formal marriage proposal to you. April Fool's was yesterday, so I'm dead serious. I would love to marry you on the set of Shake It Up, but the set's actually on top of a boat in the middle of Fiji. And I've invited every Disney Channel icon. Look, there's Bertram from Jesse sitting next to Bob Duncan from Good Luck Charlie. Oh, and there's Mr. Mosby from The Sweet Life. Wait, why is everyone in the audience a bald man? Anyways, I invited Bella Thorne, but she couldn't make it because they stopped her at the airport because she was trying to smuggle drugs. Anyways, I truly believe you were the most beautiful woman on the planet. If I could describe 
describe how you make me feel? It's like when you see a hydraulic press video and they squish a piece of soap and it becomes little soap noodles in the air. Now, my net worth is $3 and a half used Subway gift card, so I made my own little soap noodle ring just for you. So, Zendaya, will you be my wife? Guys, please send this to her. If she sees this, I will scream. My friend's dog looked like a dust bunny. So, we took him to the groomers and got him shaved. And now he looks like a little puffy cloud and he's so cute, even though he kind of looks like a human in a dog suit, like that one meme of that dog. Anyways, when we got home, we were cuddling, but then I noticed that he was digging for something in the beanbag chair. And I was like so confused. Like, was he trying to make bread? But then I noticed there was smoke coming from the beanbag chair seams. At first, I thought I tipped over one of the hundreds of unattended candles I have lit at all times. But the chair like wasn't warm or anything. So I unzipped it more and I was engulfed in a cloud of smoke and I blacked out. When I woke up, it was like I had gone through a poor and I was in some alternate reality where terrible world events such as Dance Monkey was never released. And the bat with COVID-19 ran into a glass window. I was loving this new world until I walked into my Minecraft-themed bedroom and realized, in this universe, Minecraft doesn't exist. I fell to my knees and screamed! Until I woke up next to the beanbag and I looked inside to realize that the smoke was actually just fungal spores from a moldy chicken nugget! Hi, my name's Ben, I'm 20, and I've never swallowed a pill in my entire life. Cause they make me throw up. But I'm anemic and I need pills or I'll pass out. And so far, I've just been chewing my iron pills, but they taste like an iPhone 5 battery. So today, I'm gonna learn how to swallow pills. Now, I don't have any actual pills, so I drove to 7-Eleven and got some Tic Tacs. So welcome to me making a TikTok about swallowing Tic Tacs for TikTok. Now that I had some Tic Tacs, I went to an abandoned street to practice swallowing them because I don't want to throw up on my floor. And it went like this. <laughs> I was on my very last pill and I had just upchucked the last 199 Tic Tacs, so this had to be the one. Otherwise, if I'm ever having a medical emergency because I'm having a Nerf battle and I choke on a Nerf bullet and it puts me into a coma and the doctor's like, take this pill, I'll be able to. So I put the pill on my mouth and oh my God. Ah! We're out of time on here, but if you want to see if I finally swallowed it or not, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. Today I went to the Lego store because I have the mental capacity of a toddler and I still enjoy building Lego sets, yo. But anyways, I went to the Minecraft Lego section and I picked up a box and the cashier gave me my Lego bag and I left the store and went home and I I spent five hours building it because I have literally nothing else to do because the world is ending. So I build Lego to cope with that psychologically. Also, look, it's a Lego Minecraft furnace. Ah! Anyways, it was finally done and I wanted to put it down, but my table was covered in Red Bull cans and plates for my depression meals. So I put the Lego on the ground and I went upstairs to get another Red Bull for my fridge. But as I was walking back barefoot, boom, I felt the worst pain in my life. And I looked down to see I stepped on the Lego and not just one block, the entire set. I fell to the ground in agony and I let out a scream. Thankfully, my dog ran over to check if I was okay. And I told her to go get help, but she just started pooping on the carpet and I thought this was it for me. So I wrote my will and declared that when I pass, I'm leaving my TikTok account and a half-used Starbucks gift card to, um, my dog. <laughs> Hey, guess what? Today is Miss Corona's first birthday. On November 17th, 2019, the very first dude went, <coughs> and now 55 million people have got, <coughs> and everything sucks now. Anyways, I was throwing a little party for COVID because I feel like no one else appreciates her. So I invited her over by going to the local COVID testing location, sneaking into the employees only area and licking all of the testing swabs. But when I left an employee yelled at me, <coughs> anyways, when I got home, all of a sudden I felt a little ill and boom, she was at the party. I had bought some Taco Bell for the party, ordered a thousand dollars worth of slime to play with, and just when Miss Corona thought she was about to open her birthday present, she realized the present was hand sanitizer and I grabbed the virus in a chokehold and poured the sanitizer all over the coronavirus oh, and beat shit. it with a mask for canceling everything that I was looking forward to. And worse. <laughs> Anyways, once again, please wear a mask, not just because of Corona, but also because some of y'all have mussy, dusty breath. Thanks. I'm a Canadian, and this is my Canadian passport, and this is my Canadian passport picture. Uh, and for some reason, I'm in the freaking United States during the season finale of America. Because I'm stupid, and I just really wanted some good American fast food. Anyways, I was trying to escape before it becomes the newest Purge movie. So I packed up my JoJo Siwa poster, my Rainy Rodriguez shrine, and my favorite toilet seat. And I left my room for the very last time, and walked over to the bus station to go back to Canada. And as I was sitting on that bus, I remembered I forgot my passport on my desk while filming this TikTok. So I freaked out, and I got off the bus, and I ran back to my place faster than Zoe Laverne is running from the federal authorities. And once I grabbed it, I then called an Uber back to Canada and it was $4,000, but I booked it since I missed the bus. Anyways, the Uber arrived, so I went downstairs and I got in and the guy was chill until he turned to me and said, is it just you? And I said, why? And he said, I ain't never seen two pretty best no! friends. Every morning, I check the comments on my TikToks and people always ask if I'm crazy or on the devil's salad. Because apparently I act a little bit crazy in my videos. <laughs> So, I thought I'd take you on a tour into my mind and how I make my TikToks. 
When I wake up, I eat expired rotten garbage from my neighbor's trash bin, and after a few hours, I start seeing and hearing things. And that's when I get to work. I take my iPad and go down into my basement where there's no light and sounds, and I start writing down a fun little story. And then I record the voiceover. I was applying a ton of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes, and I also wanted my hands to be soft. But then I get frustrated for stuttering so much that I punish myself by watching a full Gabby I'm Hanna podcast Gabby episode. Gabby. Then I go film it and send it off to my editor named Georgie, who I pay $5,000 per TikTok to edit them. Just kidding, the editor's me. Georgie's gone. <laughs> I ate him. Oh. Okay, surprise, surprise, this made no sense. But I did make an actual video showing the entire process of how I make my TikTok. So if you want to watch that, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So my horse's names are Beanie, Marcella, Poofy, Toofy, Fluffy, Muffy. <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. I was just wondering what the Wi-Fi password is. Oh, we don't need that here. We have plenty of horses. <laughs> yeah, um, see, I was just, I was just going to quickly check. Uh, I was just gonna check if my friend's uh, coronavirus test came back positive, so if I could just get the Wi-Fi- Shut your damn mouth right now! Mommy says the internet turns your brain to mice! I'm sorry, I was just gonna use my uh, my data, but I just tried calling 911 and it says there's no service, so uh... Good. <laughs> I cut the phone lines with my razor sharp horse teeth! <laughs> hey, uh, am I allowed to leave? Can I go? Can oh, of course you are, silly. I was just joking. If you want to leave, the bus comes soon. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm gonna- No! Oh, you can always take one of the horses. <laughs> So I was trying to watch that Luca movie on this sketchy website until I saw this ad that said some lady named Gertrude was a hot single in my area. And I thought, oh my god, it's a heat wave. I need to get Gertrude hydrated before she gets heat stroke. I clicked the picture and immediately 20 programs started downloading on my computer. And I was like, wow, Gertrude must be in STEM or computer science or something. Then all of a sudden I looked down and I had a text from Gertrude and she said that she needs fluids immediately. So I told her that I'm coming and I asked her where. And after she gave me the address, I got in my car and I drove to the address, which happened to be in Ikea. But anyway, she said to come to the bedding section and my GPS took me to the exact room, but no one was there and I was getting a little bored, so I decided to lay down for a quick nap. But when I woke up, Ikea was closed and I got up and tried to leave, but that's when I realized my wallet and keys were stolen. And I was really freaked out, but I found the exit and as soon as I got outside, I saw, I saw some figure standing behind the trees. He started approaching me and I was like, oh man, I'm sorry, was that your girl? It was too late because the man was angry and he attacked me. Hey, can I listen? Yeah, of course. Clean it, please. Oh my god, yeah, I'm so sorry. Let me clean it. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I don't want to listen anymore. <laughs> Look, it's all clean. <laughs> Go on, put it in. Today I made a DIY North Korean driver's license by taking a picture with my iPad and then I googled North Korean IDs and slapped my face on it. And I made it look all pretty by crossing this guy's name off and giving myself a fake name. But I didn't do this so I can get into a club or anything. I did it so that every day I can print a new one and change my birthday to today's date so I can get free stuff every single day like a Starbucks drink or make people be nice to me. Anyways, I first tested my ID at Olive Garden and the waiter got the whole restaurant singing happy birthday to me. Happy but more importantly, I got a big old cannoli for free, baby. Anyways, next I went to Cheesecake Factory and I showed my waitress my ID thinking she would give me, I don't know, a cheesecake slice at Cheesecake Factory. But when she came to the table, she had all these cheesecake slices and what did she give me? A bowl of berries. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. But then she dropped the bill off and charged me $8 for the strawberries. When all I wanted was a slice of cheesecake for free because they're like $10. So basically fake uh, North Korean IDs don't work at Cheesecake Factory. Last night, I had a nightmare where I was performing CPR on my dog because she just swallowed an iPhone 10 32 gigabyte hole. I thought she was gonna die, but then she spat it out, and I was like, thank God. But then the screen lit up, and it said that celebrity chef Guy Fieri had passed away. And then I started crying, because he's a legend. But then it said that Timothy Chalamet killed him? And I was like, this makes no sense. At least I'm not him. He's going to prison. But then I looked in the mirror, and I was Timothy Chalamet. And I was like, no way! So I texted my ex and told them that I had the biggest glow up in the history of all mankind. Now that I was Timothy, I was so happy knowing everyone loves me. But then I got so carried away with being him that I forgot that I was literally wanted by the police because I lit Guy Fieri on fire! <laughs> Fiery Guy Fieri arson. <laughs> For some reason, I was in Zootopia, and everyone was a furry, which was a nightmare in itself. And the cop at my door was my own dog. So I was like, come here, baby, you don't have to arrest me. But then she handcuffed me and threw me in a Russian prison, where they played Dance Monkey on repeat to torture us. <gasps> Thank God that was just a dream. Uh, wait, what's that sound? No! no!
So I was on the phone with 911 because I'd made some banana soup with a hint of ranch dressing and I'd left the gas burner on. And I was scared my house would blow up. So I said, please help. And the operator was like, it's going to be okay. We're on our way. And me being so star for human interaction replied, okay, <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> and I began to prepare for my date with the emergency services person. I dimmed the lights to set the mood. And then I set the table and put out the banana soup I'd cooked earlier and poured some fancy juice de orange. I changed out of my depression fit into something slightly less depressing and attempted to fix my hair but i ended up wanting to cut it all off and had a mental breakdown but i was like mm, another day <laughs> suddenly i heard the doorbell ring i got up and ran over to let them in but i was so excited that i didn't see the charger on the floor i forgot there was gas in my house and i tripped over and it created a spark and next thing you know um have you ever noticed how almost every label has these weird dots and color codes? These are on everything from pudding boxes to taco seasoning packets. They're on granola bar boxes and they're even on chocolate chip bags. Even my delicious cottage cheese has it too. I thought to myself, what do they mean? So I've spent the past month researching it, trying to crack the code. My first thoughts were that it had to do with the color. So I wrote down two codes from two packages down. But then my marker died, so I killed it. Then I colored in the shapes to match the secret code, but I didn't find anything, so I ripped it up. That's what I realized. It's not a color puzzle. It's a crossword puzzle. The code always appears in either four or six circles or squares. So I wrote it out again, and I knew exactly what filled the spaces this time. <gasps> Debbie Ryan. If you don't believe me, here is her with pistachio pudding has the code. Here's chocolate chip cookies on her snap story. Chocolate chips have the code. And finally, here's her with a granola bar. The granola bar has the code. Why would she do this? What if she's trying to brainwash all of us by placing these subtle codes so she can take over our brains and... Uh, so it's finally springtime, which means I've been growing flowers, succulents, and weeds. No, 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 I mean, like, I'm growing like dandelions, like weeds. Oh, God. anyways, I really wanted a sausage tree. They're going Africa. It's a real thing. Look it up. So I looked online and saw someone was selling seeds for a sausage tree. The guy selling it was named Daniel, and he said he'd give me some for free. Free sausage! But he did say not to bring my phone or tell anyone where I was going. And I was like, okay, we can't have anyone knowing that I have a non-native plant species. So I smashed my phone with a weight and drove over to Daniel's house. The house looked a little bit creepy, but I parked and walked up to it and the door was wide open so i walked in and he had told me come upstairs first bedroom on the right i was like okay so i slowly opened the door walked in and there were the seeds i could finally grow my own sausage tree i was so freaking excited so i went to go exit the door and uh it was locked Tonight on Where'd That Ho Go? He's been gone for 13 years now. Please, if you have any information, we miss him so much. <sighs> Ma'am, I'm so sorry, but your son, he's lactose intolerant. No! No! Ma'am, we live in the Milky Way galaxy. He'll die here. <laughs> Mom, don't let them take me. We have to deal with this immediately. I'm so sorry. <gasps> Initiating oh. launch sequence. Oh. I was walking down the street when I saw my biggest fear, a TikTok wiggy. I screamed and I ran over and engaged in a brawl with the wiggy and ended up stealing their wig and I was running away to hide it, but I got kind of hungry. So I stopped at Subway and got some bread with cheese. And when I finally got home, I was eating my cheese and bread from Subway and I realized it's Halloween and I don't have a costume. And I could be a wiggy for Halloween, but that's too boring. So I needed something better and decided to be YB from Coraline. So I found a black jacket and I slipped it on and then I found some skeleton gloves and then I tried getting some eyeliner put on, but it hurt so bad and I cried it all off. And then I put it all on and boom, YB. But it didn't stop there because I had a little photo shoot and then I photoshopped myself into the creepy butthole scene at the end. And, uh, right of time, but the finished results are on my Instagram if you want to go check it out at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. Last night, I got all ready to go hang out with people. On Omegle, silly. Apparently, random strangers will give you free sausages on that website. And I'm like, I love sausages. Hot dogs, jambalaya, you name it. I went to the fridge and grabbed my ketchup and my mustard, and then I logged on to Omegle.com. The first dude I saw kind of looked like my uncle. I said, hi, what's your name? He said, I'm Rajesh. And then I told him my name. After that, he asked for my address and for me to show my driver's license and my credit card. I thought it was so cool that he wanted to get to know me. But then I reminded myself, Ben, what? What do you want here for? I told Rajesh, I'm ready for the free sausage. I have my condiments. Oh, and that's when I realized it's the other kind of sausage. If you want to see what happened next, the YouTube link is in my bio. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh my gosh, hey there. Uh, I just wanted to quickly remind you that babies are literally DISGUSTING! Therefore, I'm a baby hater. Yay! Um, I want to take every single baby and put it on a boat, and then send that boat into the middle of the ocean. And then when those babies are done crying and pooping themselves, they can go freaking swim to the shore and live off coconuts on an island or something, so I never have to hear them again. Also guys, when I was 12, a bird pooped on my face, and I thought I was gonna die of salmonella. This is me buying a live crab from the store and freeing it into the ocean. The guy at the store was like, you know how to cook this, right? And I was like, oh, we are not cooking Mr. Krabs. As I was walking, some dude yelled at me and I got scared. And then this guy was walking around with an iguana. I'm like, it's my day to have an exotic pet, buddy. Look at his cute little mouth moving. Aww. I took him to the Santa Monica Pier before I freed him. And that's when I saw this guy literally kick a pigeon. I hate it here. Now, crabs can live 24 hours outside of water. But I thought, let's just free him already. Then some cops are staring at me and I got scared. I picked him up and I run to the beach and I laid him down gently on the sand. He was barely moving, so I ran into the waves to try and get him in deeper so he could swim or something. But he took a bit of a tumble. So it wasn't looking good for Mr. Krabs and I started crying. But then he started moving again and I thought, it's now or never. I scooped Mr. Krabs up and I ran over to that water and I dropped him in that water ever so gently. Oh crap, we are out of time. Um, If you want to see the rest of the video, uh, the link is in my bio. So I think I have a stalker and it's starting to freak me out. It started a month ago when I'd accidentally showed my address on my story. I deleted it immediately, but a few days later, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. Then a week later, I found a Nintendo DS outside my house that said, Hello, Benjamin. And then a week after that, I found one inside my bathroom while I was showering. And it said, See you soon. But first of all, I don't even know where he's getting all these Nintendo DSs from. Like, they don't even make those mama jamas anymore. Personally, if I was invading someone's privacy, I'd use sticky notes or something. Anyways, I decided to change my front door code to a really secret number. One, two, three, four. But then the next day, I heard the door unlock. And then someone came downstairs and they were in a black hoodie and black jeans and I thought they were gonna kidnap me, but I welcome the stalker. I haven't had a human interest in me in months, so I asked them to come cuddle with me, but they looked so caught off guard when I asked them to come under the blankets. And then I guess I out creeped the creep when I tried to lick his toes. And that's when he ran away. My stalker doesn't even want me, bruh. I was at Staples because I needed some staples so I could staple a staple into my staple box so staples wouldn't fall out anymore. But staples was sold out of all the staples and I asked a staples employee named April if they had any more staples and she said that I could order some more staples from Naples. But this staples had no staples so I was gonna leave with no staples but my phone was dying so I needed a cable so I walked past April and went to the cables but the cables were too much so I just bought a bagel and now I'm at home at my table with my bagels and no staples or cables because April from staples wanted me to choke and as I bit my bagel it had mold and the bagel was fatal and I fell off the table and my last thoughts were of my lover named Mabel when we would sit by the stables and pour Mabel all over our bagels and as I took my last breath on the floor I saw a staple Today, I went to go see Billie Eilish at Coachella, but before she came on, there was this dude wearing a big sparkly onesie who opened for her that kept staring at me, and I was thinking to myself, what's up, do you have a staring problem, buddy? But anyways, he did a little dancey dance thing, and Shrek was in the audience and seemed to love it. But his cameraman kept getting in the way and then turned to me, and the next thing I knew, rewind that. He put me on the big screen, and I freaked out and went behind the cameraman and started unplugging random cables from his camera, and it turned off the video on the screen. But anyways, then Billie Eilish came on and kept invading my personal space and staring at me, and I was like, do celebrities never get taught that staring is rude? Why are you yelling at me? But then she did her little dancey dance and left the stage, and I took a golf cart home from Coachella, and when I woke up the next morning, I checked my phone to see a DM from Billie herself asking if I was at her show with a winky face. And I replied, no, silly Billy. here's a restraining order, leave me alone. And I went back to bed. Hi, here's how you can save the Arctic in less than a minute. There's a place called the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It is one of the last places in the U.S. Arctic where endangered animals such as polar bears, caribou, and over 200 species of birds are protected from humans. Trump's administration could open up this piece of public land and sell it for oil and drilling by January 6th. Now, the Gwich'in people have been living on this sacred land for decades. This land is home to them, and they will be irreversibly harmed along with all the other wildlife that live there if we let this happen. So here's how you can help stop that in the time that it takes to watch a TikTok. Please go to protectthearctic.org. The link is in my bio on both Instagram and TikTok. Just write your name, email, and it'll send a message to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And hopefully with enough of these messages, we can prevent the sale. The Arctic is already in the worst shape that's ever been before because of climate change. We will be the generation that's affected by climate change the most. We can do our part to fix this. So please do this quick action. Push for sustainability in your daily life. And that's all for now. I love you. Bye. When I woke up this morning, I found out that I was verified on Snapchat, which meant I was going to start using it for the first time in months because, well, literally two people snapped at me aside from team snapchat telling me that it's valentine's day or something and then i go cry because i don't have a bay aside from zendaya but she doesn't know that anyways i found something that will fix that there's this app called wing that allows me to match with cool people and make new friends on snapchat as well like how i met my new best friend matilda who shares the same love for minecraft as i do and i fell in love with her she invited me to her server and showed me around her house and all her different pets and i wanted to tell her
tell her how I felt about her, so... I burned all her stuff down and stole her diamonds and crashed her server by spawning the 100 creepers because I thrive off chaos and sin for no one. I'm just kidding. We're getting married. Who wants to invite to the server? Today, I accidentally burned out my house because I was boiling Listerine Red Bull to make delicious tea when I saw a wasp had waltzed into my house. And I'm extremely allergic, so I grabbed the container to try and capture him so I could send him back to hell. And I got him, but then I realized if I try and get the lid on, he's gonna fly out and sting me, and then I will end up in hell and he will haunt me forever. So I dropped it and I ran and grabbed a piece of paper and then I put it back on and slid it under. And I actually managed to pull out the paper and I had successfully abducted him. So I put him on a plate and microwaved him until he lit up. Just kidding. I realized I'll definitely go to hell if I do that, so I let him outside and carefully put him down and released the hatches and he kicked it away but then he got up and chased me inside and i closed the door and i thought it was safe and oh i forgot to turn the stove burner off and I was sitting in a prison cell making some scrumptious bean soup with my toilet water because two weeks ago I really had to pee but I was walking home from Taco Bell and my house was 30 minutes away so I stumbled into what I thought was a park with a bunch of pretty stone blocks organized in rows like Minecraft but it turned out I made lemonade on Michael Jackson's grave and the groundskeeper saw me and told me they were gonna sue me and I told them I don't know anyone named Sue and I walked away but then they forced me to go to court and when I got to the stand to testify they said I was gonna get something called a felony and I said that's baloney and then I pulled out my iPad pad and showed them my notes app apology because i'm a tiktoker and i'm new to la and i'm working to become a better person but then they threw me in prison regardless so if anyone wants a nice cup of bean water soup uh please mail me a nintendo switch so i can check on my villagers because i miss them very so much and dearly please i'm so bored and lonely so we just hit five million and i wanted to celebrate with baked bean jello i got my keys and drove over to the dollar store and bought a candle some beans and jello then i drove home and got all my ingredients together and started cooking first i boiled some earth juice and then tried the instructions but i got bored so i yanked the powder out and started pouring it but then that thing happened where it's going too slow so you have to stop and rip a new one and then it was flowing like my eyes when i watched tap at the browns cooking videos then i poured the boiling earth juice and then a cup of cold earth juice and i stirred it until i gave myself arthritis until i remembered oh, i forgot the beans i found an old can opener and then i put a can of beans in the micro okay not funny anyways i tried opening it but the lid got stuck and i panicked but then i finally got it half open and i strained the beans because i didn't want bean juice ah bean juice but then as i was straining it the camera just decided to tilt away from me which was quite rude anyways i had my clean beans and i poured them in the jello stirred it a bit drop the five in the jello and then put it in the fridge it has to chill overnight so if you want to see how my cursed bean jello turned out the final product is on my instagram at ben of the week i was seeing how many oranges i could fit in my mouth before throwing up when my doorbell rang i wasn't expecting anyone and when i answered it there was no one there just a notebook it was kind of creepy but when i opened it i realized it was for my horse girl cousin gretchen and she'd drawn me uh peppa pig i thought i'd draw her something back so i made um two minions in love and i left it in the same place for her the next morning the doorbell rang again and i opened it to find another peppa so i took the liberty of drawing rainy rodriguez as my sleep paralysis demon and put it back the same place as yesterday oh However, the next day I received something completely different. When I opened the sketchbook, Peppa had turned into bacon? Is, is this a threat? I texted her, haha, very funny, Gretchen, stop coming to my house. And she was like, what? And so I replied, Peppa time is canceled, Gretchen. And she replied, I don't know what you're talking about. So, knowing that wasn't Gretchen the whole time, I felt completely terrified, so I watched some seafood ASMR eating and fell asleep. I woke up to my leg burning from my laptop. My hand kind of felt weird, and I noticed I was covered in bacon. Anyways, now I'm completely terrified, and I don't know what to draw in return. Please help. I was microwaving hot chip ravioli and sitting by a fire that I started in my living room when I started longing for someone to share the meal with. But then my eyes caught the word Tinder. I dropped my ravioli and grabbed my phone to download Tinder. And I made a profile to show off my personality and my love for food. After I added some pictures and finished my profile, I was going to run some ranch dressing through my coffee maker to see what would happen. When all of a sudden my phone went off and when I grabbed it, it notified me that I had a match. Ever since then, we've been talking nonstop and we're going to go on a picnic tonight and see who can dislocate their jaw the furthest and fit the most apples in their mouth. Anyways, wish me luck on my date. I was drawing a fat little rat with a top hat on my arm when I realized this would be a cool tattoo. And I don't have any tattoos on my body because my pain tolerance is so low that if I stub my toe, I'd probably pass out. Anyways, I decided to get my first tattoo ever and I was walking over to the tattoo parlor when I started wondering how am I just gonna commit to getting a tattoo? I'm so indecisive that I rearranged my room for no reason at least three times a week. And as I was at the door to the tattoo place, I chickened out. But I decided to get something way better. I ran home and I grabbed my rat and I gave him a bucket hat and I made him sit still because I decided that I'm gonna make a painting of a rat in a hat instead of that. So then, and trace him as my little rat model. And then after he was traced, I started painting it. And then once it was painted, I cut it out. And voila, that is a rat in a hat. And he also needs a name though, so please help. So I keep seeing new TikTok houses popping up and I realized, wait a minute, I live in a house and I have TikTok. I could make a TikTok house. First things first, I needed to name the house. So I thought I'll close my eyes, spin in a circle. And the first thing I see when I open them, I'll name it. Okay, so I passed out because I got too dizzy. But when my eyes opened, I saw a piece of chocolate. I thought, the cocoa. 
pillow house. That's cute. But as my eyes focused, I realized it was actually my dog's doo doo. But then I had the idea the doo doo house. I started cleaning up so it didn't look like I was filming TikToks in a dumpster. I shoveled the sidewalk so that no one slips and breaks their neck while throwing it back to Savage. Then I checked to see if there were towels so that all the stinky TikTokers can shower. But then I remembered I ran out of toilet paper weeks ago and I've been using. Anyways, finally, it was time to recruit people. I DM'd over 50 celebrities, TikTokers, YouTubers. I even told the girl who sings Dance Monkey that she's banned from the doo doo house and. She literally replied! <laughs> I waited 24 hours to see who would reply, and if you want to see everyone that's now a part of the doo doo house, the link is in my bio. So I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see that Justin Bieber was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Immediately, I roll up my sleeve and ask the tick that's been sucking my blood for the past five days that I picked up in Zimbabwe if he's gonna give me Lyme disease. Are you gonna give me Lyme disease? No, bro, you're good. I'm clean. Feeling relieved, I go back to bed. Wait, I do have lemon disease, though. Lemon disease? What? <laughs> Myrtle, why are you walking so slow, man? You're 80. The Grim Reaper's right there. He's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. <laughs> I bet your bones would just go snap, crackle, pop if I just hit the gas right now. You're finally done! Who would have thought? Not me. Myrtle, your husband has fallen and cannot get up. Today I woke up and decided it's a good day to buy a hamster. My friend and I zoomed over to the hamster store and we looked at them and they were so cute. And we realized we need a hamster house and some hamster food. So we loaded up a cart and got a bunch of toys and bedding. Then it was time to pick a hamster. So we got an employee to open up the box. And my friend picked a little one and then it bit her. And like not like a tiny bite, like this hamster got like a whole vein and there was this family watching horror as my friend lost blood. Anyways, that hamster was canceled and we grabbed a different one and the employee put her in a different box. But we were about to go in the car and we were like, this box sucks. So we put her in her own little transport orb. Then we got home and put together her little hamster house with a little carrot and we took her out the hamster ball and she was exploring and vibing and she still doesn't have a name so if you have any ideas please let me know i had just finished doodling all over my arms for five hours straight while watching the minions movie but then my arms started to burn and i was like it's fine it's washable ink so i quickly ran upstairs to my bathroom to wash it off and it was permanent the ink was now fused to my skin and i could feel the doodles entering my bloodstream but i got distracted and thought doodle is such a funny sounding word like you can't say doodle angrily <laughs> and then i realized my arms had fallen off they were just on the floor staring back at me how am i gonna deal with the spider colony in my bathroom i'm gonna have to eat them to get rid of them actually that wasn't too bad it's a little bit crunchy and a little bit salty how am i gonna drive to the top Taco Bell now. How am I gonna shop for mayonnaise? How will I put on hand sanitizer? Wait, wait, I don't need hand sanitizer because I have no hands. I won't be catching no viruses. Hi, I'm Ben, and this is why you should chop off your arms. Hi there, you're probably not gonna believe me, but you're- Better watch the first ever TikTok that's longer than a minute. And if you don't believe me, well, here is a timer, and I will give you a participation medal at the end. Okay. Let's begin. But in the meantime, here's some monkey facts to keep you entertained. Okay, monkeys can understand written numbers and can even count. They can also understand basic parts of arithmetic and even in rare cases, multiplication. Okay, next, um, Uncle Fat is a morbidly obese monkey in Thailand who gorged himself on junk food and soda that tourists had left behind. As the leader of this troop, the gluttonous monkey had subordinate monkeys bringing him goodies. Nah, there, there's no way this is real. What? He looked exhausted. Obese monkey Uncle Fatty, who became a star after being sent to fat camp, is missing and fear dead after falling off the wagon. What did I just stumble across? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've decided to take the rest of the time for this TikTok to do a documentary on Uncle Fatty, so... The Disappearance of Uncle Fatty, a Ben of the Week original. July 8th, 2019. The Sun reports the long tail macaque. Macaque. <laughs> macaque! <laughs> the long tail macaque, who ballooned to the size of two monkeys, was sent to a weight loss camp in 2017, but went back to his old ways once home in Bangkok, Thailand. Bangkok. Macaque. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Fatty piled on the weight over his many years after being fed high calorie food by tourists visiting the Kun Kala Monument. Environmentalists monitoring his progress after weight loss camp say the last time he was seen alive was on February 26th. Locals asked the police to check the CCTV footage but have still been unable to identify the body. It is now feared that Uncle Fatty has either become lost, relocated to a new area, or even been killed. The ch- Chunky Monkey's body has not been found! However, with local legends saying the force reclaims bodies of the monkeys after they die. Aww. Kavinabat Mongol Tekachat, the president of the We Love Monkey Club. <laughs> Real. President of the We Love Monkey Club said our staff always saw him sitting in the front of the monument every time they came to feed the pack, but one day he was just gone. Pause, what is the We Love Monkey Club documentary over? We Love Monkey Club. <laughs> oh, it literally doesn't it.
There is no We Love Monkey Club. Okay, but what is this video? As you sit here with 20 seconds left on the TikTok clock, did you think this is where this TikTok was gonna go? Did you think you were gonna watch a documentary about a fat monkey in Bangkok, Thailand, and then watch me dance to a song by Cheeky Monkey Club? No. But here we are, and here's your medal. I'm proud of you. Welcome to the family. <laughs> oh my god. What the? Hey y'all, I'm currently in the vegan teacher's basement, so I thought I'd give you a house tour. Here's a dining room table. It has Don't Eat Cats painted on it. Um, just a reminder if you're gonna do that today. Here are two fly swatters, which, um, I don't know if you can have that as a vegan, but whatever. Upstairs is the studio. Uh, that's her exercise bike. She also streams here by putting her phone on a tripod, which is a wooden block from Home Depot with three nails in it. And this is her schedule, which starts at 5 in the morning to wake up and eat blueberries and chia seeds. Anyways, kitchen tour. This is me, by the way. This horse, um, the horse's name was Ben. Doesn't mean I want to ride you, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Her fridge has like 4,000 uh, vegetables and uh, a pepperoni stick, which is really interesting. Um, don't ask any questions about it, otherwise... Actually, stop filming for a second. Okay. Anyways, welcome to the backyard. Here's some uh, propaganda and military-grade security systems that fire tactical rounds if it sees you eating meat. And that's the tour of the happy vegan home that I'm so happy to be in the basement of. Today I door dashed some cooked goldfish from PetSmart because I was really hungry and they were only $3. So I placed the order and walked over to PetSmart to pick it up. But when I got there, I walked in and found the food pickup section and saw all the soon-to-be sushi swimming around in their little tanks that were right next to the not-so-swimming sushi. And that's when I realized maybe pet store food isn't the best move. But I was still super hungry, so I asked an employee if they have anything else to eat. But she told me if I want to act picky, they have rats for sale. So I opened up the rat fridge and... I couldn't do it. So I ended up buying some bugs for like $2, which was such a great and amazing deal. And when I got home, I was so hungry that I ripped open the bag of bugs and just told myself that this little grasshopper in my chopsticks is a Cheeto. So I popped it in my mouth and I felt movement. And I spat it out and it jumped out of the bowl. And I panicked and ran to the toilet. And for the next three hours, I vomited up my insides. I was putting my clothes in the dishwasher today because I broke my washing machine when I tried washing dishes in it last week because my dishwasher was broken in the first place. But anyways, I was in the kitchen and heard a snowball hit my window and when I looked out the window, my elderly neighbor Myrtle had put up a sign that said, check your mail. Now, as threatening as that seemed, I was so excited because her son owns the website where you watch corn with a pea. And in the past, she's given me like a thousand dollars at Christmas and a cute little picture of herself. So I went to the door and grabbed the card and when I opened it, I noticed that this time there was no gift, which is fine and all, but also the picture she had sent me had some man hand in the corner and on the card there was weird capitalization so i highlighted the capital letters and it spelled help me and i started freaking out so i drove over to her house which was 50 feet away sorry greta thunberg and i was gonna save her from being choked but um when i got there there was a van outside that said uh 50 shades of play and i think that's what what myrtle's into so now i'm traumatized I went to Universal Studios today, but when I got to security, I remembered I had a can of spray cheese in my bag, which you can't bring into parks or anything because it's an aerosol and they're probably scared that I'm gonna, I don't know, like burn down the Minions ride. So I took my bag and went into the alleyway and wrapped it in the label for my Febreze can that I use as deodorant from time to time. And guess what, baby? They never found it when they searched my bag. So anyways, I went on the Minions ride and as much as I would have loved to set it on fire until it's nothing but smoldering ruins, I had to settle for beating up the Minion in the gift shop. But anyways, after the ride, I realized I was pretty hungry and I wasn't gonna spend 20 dollars on harry potter butterbeer when i can just put butter in my beer myself so i snuck into the employees only area to eat my spray cheese and i thought i grabbed the right can when i sprayed it in my mouth but i accidentally grabbed the febreze and basically blinded myself so i asked siri call poison control and she was like calling animal control and i was like what no and animal control was like hello yes what are you reporting and i was like my eyes are burning and they said your ass is burning we recommend pepto bismo and i knew they weren't gonna help so i hung up and i made the hard decision to flush my eyes with I'm in North Korea right now, because last week I was just making some delicious corn dog sushi in Japan, and before I could take a bite, I heard the nuclear missile warnings go off because Kimmy Jong-un was having a hissy fit. I spilled my corn dog sushi because of him, but as I was hiding underneath the table about to be vaporized, that's when I realized North Korea is only two hours away, so I bought a Kit Kat because Kim Jong-un needs to take a freaking break and a ticket to North Korea, so I can tell him to stop doing that. Anyways, I went to the airport, and the plane was either on fire or someone just had a vape, but anyways, once I landed, I immediately got on this bus, and the soldiers boarded the bus and checked my 
documents. And then I was sent through this underground tunnel underneath the border. And then I emerged at Kim Jong-un's palace. And it was pretty cute for a warmongering dictator. I walked up to the gate and gave it a good old knock. But no one was home, I guess. So I was just walking around when I heard a security alarm go off. And I scrambled to find a place to hide. So I ducked into this cubby hole and hid there until they were gone. And then I snuck out into the bushes and spent hours trying to return to civilization. And I ate some blueberries that weren't blueberries. But hours later, I finally found my way out and decided to give up on world peace and just eat the Kit Kat because I was hungry. Sorry, Kimmy. Stop. Stop. I was cleaning my room today when I found out that I just hit 10 million followers. And to celebrate, I wanted to give each and every one of you one dollar. Now, I don't have 10 million dollars, but you know who does? The bank. So I went over there and had the idea to R to the O to the B it, but quickly realized that I get too anxious simply going to Starbucks and ordering for myself without nearly peeing my pants. So walking into a bank to commit a crime is kind of out of the question. So my second idea was to make an Ed Sheeran disguise that is so convincing it looks like a deep fake. So I taped it to my face and I used this simple hack that works on any ATM machines where you can type in the number of the address where the ATM is, like 900 for example, and then it'll think it's undergoing maintenance and spread out all its cash. So I tried it and boom, I suddenly had $20,000 and I stopped at each and every ATM punching the code getting racks when I remembered they have security cameras and even though I was disguised as Ed Sheeran, I wanted to be safe so I gently disconnected the camera from the ATM and put it on the ground. And for the rest of the night I'd never felt more alive single-handedly. Wait, just kidding. They actually got me. Well, at least I still have money for bail, and I still have 10 million of you guys. Uh, wait, um... I wanted to go to Chili's today, but it was burning down. So instead, I went to go get sushi. But it was one of those places where it comes on a conveyor belt and you can take what you want, except for this piece of shrimp that refused to cooperate and wouldn't really. But it's okay, because they also have a screen you can order from. So I ordered myself some crispy rice and it zoomed by faster than I could say, no, officer, I had nothing to do with the Chili's burning down. Anyways, then I saw these nasty cubes that look like Minecraft gravel and I lost my appetite. So I put all the plates down the chute since I was done with them when I wondered what's actually in there. And it said, please don't insert hands or objects. But what did I do? Hit record my phone and insert it into the slot which was really smart because then i dropped it down into the chute and had to call over a waiter in shame and he told me that non-play items go out the garbage chute around back so i went down this creepy corridor and finally found it and when i grabbed my phone and sat down to check what footage i had recorded uh, i saw Today I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics because I think I'm really good at gymnastics. But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID. So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport. So once I got to the airport, I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo. And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket. And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo. And after I took my seat, I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan, huh? And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden, the oxygen mask came down. And I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the crowd was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... Today, I made a New Year's resolution to stop filling up my gas car with diesel just because it's cheaper. Because last time I did that, it started smoking when I was driving back from the gas station and then eventually burst into flames. So I've actually failed my first New Year's resolution because now I have no car to fill up with gas and it's 40 grand to repair the garage from fire damage. But I can't go to the bank because I don't have a car. So I walked in minus 40 degree weather to the car store and bought an electric car with all the money I made selling human organs off the black market. And it's really cute and it looks like a ladybug and I drove it home and found out I can play it in with the same charger as my phone. So I grabbed my dog and we went on a little mini road trip for about 47 minutes when my car died because apparently you can't charge a car with a phone charger. So now I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, genuinely considering eating my cheese that I brought as a snack while I wait for the tow truck to come, obviously.
Today, I woke up and grabbed my phone and text my friends, good morning, bestie. But instead, I chose violence today. And out of the blue, I Snapchatted my friend, I know what you did. And then I had added her on Snapchat because I wanted to see her anger level. Then I put my phone away and I went upstairs to make lunch. And while I was getting the ingredients to make some delicious chocolate nachos, my phone started blowing up. But I didn't look at them because I was microwaving my chocolate nachos. And then once the nachos were done, I sat down and I enjoyed them. And then I went to the sink and I washed my plate. And then I decided it was a good time to assess her anger levels. So I checked my phone and she had said, Yeah, I told everyone you're an ugly ass, annoying ass, smelly, especially smelly ass bitch with a dog that looks like a raw chicken breast that you could boil and use the eye crust as seasoning. Lose my number. So anyways, um, I don't have my best friend anymore and I'm going back to bed. Do you ever scroll through Instagram all day like a Coco Melon iPad baby until you see that you're somehow on Christian Mingle and you've matched with the mom from Wizards of Waverly Place? But then when you switch back to Instagram, it's down and you're like, uh, what am I gonna do now? Well, that happened to me. So I thought, well, may as well join the Amish. So I went to their website, which I was surprised they even had in the first place. And I signed myself up and gave them my address and my social security number, which I didn't really know why they needed that. But anyways, later that day, someone rang my doorbell and slipped a business card under the door. And when I picked it up, it had a number on it. So I texted the number and I I decided to ask them, so what's it like being in the Amish? And they replied, we are in Spain. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't know they had the Amish in Spain. So you know what I did? I booked the next flight to Barcelona to try and join them. But when I finally got there, I turned my phone off airplane mode and the text came in. And it turns out he actually said they are in pain, not Spain, because they have no electricity. And, well, sucks to be young, I'm in Spain. Ole, 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 ole. So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic- Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because it filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying to die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face. It got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth I was so excited today to see Harry Styles in that new movie that he's in today. So I went to the theater and snuck in my own snacks because a hot dog is $12, but a pea and ketchup sandwich is too. But as I was enjoying, enjoying my delicious meal, um, they flashed an ad for like 30 seconds saying, bring, bring blood, blood to bathroom stall four. And I looked around the theater and like, no one was phased by this. So I, I sat through the movie, but Harry Styles wasn't the only thing making me feel curious. So I left as I as the credits rolled and I went to the bathroom and I didn't think anyone was in there, but I, um, I found stall number four and I went in and locked the door behind me and uh, there was this, there, there was a guy asking for the blood, I guess, and um, I wasn't about to give him my, my blood, but I remembered that I had my ketchup still, so I poured some on a piece of toilet paper, and I, and I handed it to him, and it turns out the guy in the stall was actually just out of toilet paper and needed some, and I don't know what the cult stuff was about, but, but I'm now about to be murdered. Hey! Every day I bike past this fenced off neighborhood near me that's radioactive from a nuclear meltdown. But today I decided to explore it, so I went through a gap in the fence and after walking for about 10 minutes, I got to this mysterious door in the middle of nowhere, so I did a little knock and let myself in and closed it behind me to be polite to the radiation. Anyways, I went down the stairs and saw, um, some interesting artifacts that I was not exactly a fan of. And I continued through the bunker and found a very inviting door that made me feel super safe, which led to more stairs that had my knees cracking like Rice Krispies. Anyways, I eventually got to this tunnel and some doors at the end of it that said, Danger, do not enter. But I went in because my middle name is Danger. Just kidding, it's Emil. And after I went through the door, it closed behind me and I tried everything but couldn't open it up because it was locked. So I decided to look around and see what my grave location was going to look like, thinking maybe it's a movie theater or a game room. And I turned the lights on to see that it was an actual nuclear missile silo where they held the nukes. And it went 100 feet down and now this is where I live, I guess. And my phone is now on 1% uploading this TikTok. So if you see this, that's the last time you're going to... Last night I went to Chuck E. Cheese to lie and say it's my birthday to get free pizza. 
And it worked, baby! But the place was terrifying, and the food was even scarier. And after a few bites, I started feeling sick like I had worms in my stomach. So I got up, and I stumbled out of the restaurant, and I went home. Then the next day, I scheduled an emergency Zoom doctor's visit, and he told me that I'm lactose intolerant. And I was like, what the hell? I don't lactose, I got all 10, baby! But then he told me to put my feet away, and I was like, you're right, you should be paying me for this, not the other way around, buddy. And then he started telling me, you can't eat pizza anymore. But his video started to cut out, but it's okay, because I know what lactose intolerance is. I can't have bread anymore! So I got rid of all my bread and dumped all of that fart food right in the trash. And then I grabbed some milk and chugged nothing but pure milk for a few days. And you know what? It was really good for a bit until I started feeling a storm brewing ten times stronger than what Chuck E. Cheese did to me. So I immediately ran to the bathroom and... So apparently lactose intolerance is the milk one, but at least I don't lactose, baby! I don't usually do this, but I'm about to drag some children on the internet, okay? So three months ago, I was walking my dog home when I heard my name get called behind me. And when I got home, I was ding-dong ditched by these children, okay? Now, usually I'd be like, a ding-dong ditch, whatever, except this happened TEN MORE TIMES! And these human dung beetles aren't like you guys, like you guys actually watch my videos. Look at this! <laughs> That is them literally trying to figure out what my name is. And in a moment of frustration, I put this on my story. To the rodent children that keep ringing my doorbell asking if Ben of the Week lives here, can y'all go play Fortnite or something? <laughs> and then their mom DM'd me. So those rodent children will not be ringing your doorbell anymore. Please delete their pictures as of- I took it one step further. For musty rodent children at home watching my story on their leaked frog tablet. <laughs> Anyways, please respect my privacy or I will call you a rodent online and get your Xbox taken away. <laughs> I keep seeing WAP this, WAP that, but I didn't know what it meant. So I texted my grandma and she said, it stands for We All Pray. And I thought that's so wholesome and there's a dance to it too. So I was learning the dance in my bedroom when I accidentally bonked my head on the floor and gave myself a nosebleed. And as I looked in the mirror, I realized I'm 11 from Stranger Things' older brother, 20. I tried testing out my powers and I made a tic-tac levitate. And then I tried to lift the humongous weight on my shoulders of living with the world's number one biggest that is juicy as butt! Uh, anyways, it didn't work. But now that I have powers, I teleported myself to the aquarium, specifically the frog section, and I used my powers to smuggle some frogs out of there. And my backpack was full of frogs, but the security guard caught me, and I didn't have enough money to bail myself out, so I started making merch from prison with the frog babies that were taken away from me. And now, the merch is officially out! I designed it myself, and 30% of the proceeds are going to charity. So yeah, come bail me out of frog prison, we got phone cases! Hey, no phones in prison! <laughs> Never mind. I was attempting to make a vanilla bean frappuccino, but I didn't have any vanilla, so it was just a bean frappuccino. And, well, it didn't taste very good, and I couldn't afford a real one from Starbucks either, because I kind of jammed my credit card into the disc slot of my Xbox to try and pay for Fall Guys. But I never got my card back, so, um... Anyways, it was 4 a.m., and Starbucks was closed, so I was gonna have to sneak in. So, I drove over to the Halloween store, and I found a disguise. And then I paid for it and left and met up with some Oompa Loompas trying to help me. But we went to get Subway first, because we needed sustenance for the heist. Anyways, it was finally time, and we arrived at the Starbucks, and we're ready to bust in there. We arranged in perfect Oompa Loompa formation, but I decided I wanted boba instead. So we went and got boba and busted it down inside the boba place instead. Anyways, now I have this wig and I don't know what to do with it. And I tried blow drying it, but it's made of plastic. So toxic fumes came off and I accidentally breathed it in. And now I have three legs and I could run faster than a Tesla boy. <laughs> I was getting my teeth fixed today, because last week I tried one of those bang energy drinks that all those TikTokers promote, and it tasted like urine and made my teeth fall out. Anyways, as I was sitting there, I accidentally popped out the ushy gushy thing that was sitting at the back of my throat, and it fell on the floor, so I picked it up off the ground and popped it back in without wiping it off or anything. But then when I got home, I felt something sharp in my mouth and noticed I had a fingernail glued to my tooth, and I flipped my shit. I was so grossed out, and I tried ripping it off, but it was stuck on. And then I tried using a fork to scrape it off, but that didn't work. And then I tried playing dentist, and all I did was knock out another other two. And then I realized I need something powerful to get it off. So I walked over to the local power plant near me to try and zap it off. And I climbed up a power line and bit down on it when zap! I woke up and I checked my lip and the fingernail was gone. And I was so happy so I grabbed my phone and Ugh! a lightning bolt shocked me. And that's when I realized the power line had given me powers. And I was Mr. Electrodad. <laughs> I was simply vibing in an abandoned airport. Because if you've seen the news recently, that millionaire YouTuber Jeffree Star got robbed. And I was actually one of the culprits. I went to his house and I opened up his dresser and found some Gucci shoes and a Dior bag and I grabbed as much cash as I could and I dipped. And as I was in the elevator escaping from the fifth floor of his house, I realized I'm a millionaire. I should go shopping. So I went looking for the Gucci store, but everything was closed because of COVID. So I went home, opened up my laptop to do some online shopping and saw that the abandoned airport near me is for sale. So I bought it for $420 million. And when I got there, it was 
completely empty. I was running around exploring the empty food court and pretending I was airport security. And then I did a little dance because I was enjoying myself. When I decided to take a flight to Rwanda, which is the furthest possible country from America. But while I was flying, I noticed that Jeffree Star was on the wing and he was sabotaging the plane trying to get revenge on me. And then the lights went out and there was a bunch of turbulence and ah! I bought some tortilla chips from the store, but while I was eating them, I realized that the TIT in the Tostitos logo is two people sharing some chips and salsa. I thought, how cute is that? As I sat there with no friends to share my chips and salsa with. And no TIT either, because I am a boy. But that's when I realized, duh, I can just throw myself a chip and salsa party. People can come over and we can make salsa, but not using tomatoes because they are disgusting. Instead, we'll make a... Uh... What's a good thing to turn into a salsa? Dirty sock. <gasps> That's it! Dirty sock salsa! Because anything tastes better than tomatoes! Anyways, I still need people to come to my salsa party, because right now, there's no TIT! So I did what any sane person would do. I posted my address on the internet! Instantly, my doorbell was ringing non-stop. And that's when I realized I posted my address on comerobme.com! After looking at my video doorbell, I didn't want to give the creeps outside any of my belongings. And especially not my Animal Crossing amiibo. So, I gave them the one thing I did not need. Salsa with tomatoes. Anyways, I may be having my salsa party alone now, but I still got my dirty sock salsa. Two weeks ago, I saw a $35 inflatable frog costume, and I bought it because I'm sick of wearing a mask, and a frog costume covers everything. I was waiting for it to arrive today while seeing if banana peels would stick to my ceiling when the doorbell rang. I ran downstairs and saw that the suit finally came. First, I got my head stuck, but then I managed to get it on, and I was so happy, but I couldn't reach behind me. So I asked my friend to zip me up, and oh gosh, you're too fat for it. Anyways, I finally had it on at least, so I was excited to hit the streets. I was walking around in the suit, talking to some friendly citizens, and dancing whenever I crossed the street. When I saw people lined up for something. What's this lineup for? Is this for ice cream? Ice cream. But the ice cream place didn't have any samples, so I kept freaking walking. Then I stared in the window of some shops trying to make eye contact with people until they got freaked out. And then I dropped some frog puns. What do frogs drink? Coca cola But that's when I made a grave yeah. mistake. I was busting down a Nicki Minaj and throwing it back on a Tesla that was parked. When? There's a person sitting in it. <laughs> if you want to see what happened to me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was standing in the burnt rubble where my house used to be because two weeks ago I blew up my little TikTok candle, but I didn't blow it up hard enough. And it was right next to a roll of paper towel. And I went into the bathroom, but I had a gut feeling it wasn't out. So I went back in and sure enough, I had to blow it out again. After that, I made a struggle meal out of the nasty cereal from the Lucky Charms and some Tic Tacs to really channel the flavor of my white heritage. And I took the pan off the burner, which was very close to a box of matches. And I was pouring it in a bowl as I was about to eat it when I realized I left the burner on. So I quickly ran over to the stove to turn it off and I went back to my food but i can't eat unless i'm watching something so i turn on she but like my freaking laptop is about to die so i plug it into my extension cable that also has every other thing that was plugged into it and i realized that's probably not safe so i just plugged it into the wall and while i was watching my show i got distracted so i posted on my story that astrology isn't real because i felt like starting drama and instantly i had 37 curses placed on me all the plates in my kitchen started floating and then i went outside and my house got smited by lightning so uh if anyone has a really nice and comfy cardboard box that i can sleep in let me know <laughs> so i was making my delicious quarantine meal of tortilla chip cereal, but as soon as I took a bite, I dropped a piece on the ground and my freaking dog ate it. And I thought to myself, isn't it weird how us humans just live with animals? Like somehow a wolf evolved into this cute little rat looking thing, even though she wouldn't survive a day in the wild. But as I was making this TikTok, I was like, wait, where's Kobe? And I caught her in the corner of my eye running directly towards the road. I ran so fast, they canceled the Olympics because they knew I would just win everything. Anyway, she was almost at the street and to my left was a car coming. I thought to myself, am I willing to lay down my life for this little rat? And I was like, nah, I'm not ready to meet Bob Ross and grumpy cat in heaven so i just let the car turn her into a pancake of course i would say for are you crazy i lunged in front of the car and shoved her out of the way but um uh so it turns out the car was parked the whole time and like was not going anywhere hey it's not my fault that i have poor depth perception <laughs> Okay, this is why I'm banned from Zoom. A few weeks ago, I joined some of my followers' Zoom classes. Uh, I'm with uh, Zoom Technical Support, and we've been getting some DDoS attacks, and they've got, like, your, your Minecraft password, your Roblox password. I don't actually have Minecraft or any of that. <laughs> now, it was just some good old jokes, and I posted it on YouTube for fun, but what I didn't expect was for the video to get almost 2 million views. And I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. And then I went to bed, and when I checked my email the next day, I found out that people snitched, and the teacher sent privacy complaints. Now, I haven't been on this planet for for too long, but I did not think jail would be coming this soon. So obviously I blurred all the faces out and I thought it was done, but that's when I got emails from some of them. The first email was from a mom asking if it was her child that sent me the Zoom link. And I'm like, I don't remember what I had for breakfast. Oh wait, I do remember. 
there was a big old bowl of nothing because my stomach doesn't activate until 3 p.m. And I hate eggs because they're just chicken poop that becomes a baby chicken. Anyways, I told her I didn't know until a teacher emailed me. We're out of time, but if you want to see what they said and why Zoom banned me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. Remember on Vine when people would get injured and then go viral for no reason? Well, I'm going to be the first person on TikTok. So that put me in a coma for about 50 years. And the first thing I did when I woke up was check if the TikTok of me getting hit by a car went viral. But I found out the TikTok was no more. It was replaced by Vine 2000. Anyways, I was feeling hungry and super skinny after not eating for five decades. So I checked what was in the fridge. There was some pizza with mold on it, but mold just adds extra flavor. So I ate it. After my mold meal, I decided to wander around the empty wasteland. I was skating around, but then started to feel lonely because humans went extinct from COVID-70. But then I realized this is the future. I'm sure they have time travel. I said, hey Siri, do you have time travel? And she was like, yes, yeah, stupid, it's the future. What day do you want to go to? And I decided to go to a date that would change history. November 13th. I teleported into a Walmart and went to go look for the Gummy Bear album. I looked on every shelf, but I was a year too early. I told Siri, Pash me the rock. Pick my dribble up. This right here is my birth certificate. Yup, I left my birth certificate in my pocket and it went through the washing machine. I found it while doing laundry and it was shriveled up like a little pecan. So the first thing I did besides completely panic was I tried putting it in the oven to get the water out. But then my whole house filled with smoke and now it's a burnt little turd nugget. Now everyone loses things. Things happen. I've washed my passport before. I've lost my wallet. I've microwaved my own credit card to see if it would turn into a potato chip. It did. My grandpa lost me in a parking lot when I was 10 and a strange man tried to abduct me and sell me for two goats on the black market in Zimbabwe. It's whatever. But what do you do when you literally destroy your birth certificate? Am I supposed to crawl right back into the womb and pop out and be like, wah, wah. Give me a birth certificate now. If you Google how to get another birth certificate, it just says you were the world's biggest idiot. So I've decided I have to make a new identity. I try to think of it less as illegally photoshopping a birth certificate and more like creating a new sim. I printed it off and I'm excited to share that I am now Aria Nagrande. I think it looks super professional and no one will think that it's fake. Today, I gave myself a terrible haircut because my hair had the wingspan of a pterodactyl. Before I started, I needed to get prepared, so I put a garbage bag on myself to keep the hair off, but then I realized I looked like a spawn of Lucifer, and I couldn't stop cry laughing. But then I parted my hair and started cutting. I didn't want to see the damage I was doing, so I didn't look, and I cut it as if Helen Keller was giving herself a haircut. I accidentally cut off too much, and I thought it was bad enough until the scissors started getting stuck in my hair, and then I got it out, and then the scissors got stuck again. At this point, I'd pulled out more hair than I had cut, and I looked like an egg, so I decided to just give up and take the clips out. And when I pulled them out, I looked like an Oompa Loompa. I did cut a lot of hair, but I kind of liked how it turned out until I realized I missed a spot. And then I just started cutting pieces for fun. And then I cut too much off and <sighs> dang it, we're out of time. But if you want to see what happened, the video is on my channel and the link is in my bio. Today, I'm surprising my mom with cooked snails for dinner. <laughs> but these are normal snails. These are from the dollar store. So I had all the ingredients to make it into a pasta dish. So I opened up the can of snails and... <laughs> Got in my eye. Ah! I got snail juice in my eye. So those my nasty, smelly snails, and I put them in a bowl when I started on the pasta. We got noodles, t tarragon, and pasta sauce, baby. I boiled some water and spilled half the pasta while it went in. And then it started boiling over, and I was panicking. But then I was draining it, and three noodles were getting stuck, and I was getting mad. Next, we were mincing garlic for the escargot, and it looked like little mini garlic noodles, love. Then I put it all together with the snails, garlic, blue cheese, tarragon, and threw her in the oven. I felt like Remy from Ratatouille, baby. Minus being the chef, I just felt like the rat. Then my mom got home. It's almost dinner time. Smells good. Guess what it is? It smells like some sort of garlicky wine sauce. Okay, but there's something else added. The link is in the bio if you want to see your get surprised with snails. Today I'm gonna make the most annoying TikTok audio ever. First, we're gonna wrap Captain Hook by replacing all the swears with Minecraft lyrics. Punch of these trees, I need some wood. Kill a creeper, he thought he could. Then we can't forget these sound effects. Okay, then whatever this video is. Then that terrible Max and Ruby remix. A little fun voice line. Yeah, I have chlamydia. What about it? Change the pitch. Yeah, I have chlamydia. What about it? Now, y'all know that annoying giggle <laughs> sound in every mashup? We're adding that too. Now, let's scream the lyrics to say so. <laughs> Perfect. Add that and then gunshots. Wait, are you coming to the tree? Then a sprinkle of Nicki Minaj and then Yankee. He would know. Now we have our audio. Time to dance to it. Punch of these trees, I need some wood. Kill a creeper, he thought he could. Stack of diamonds like DVS. Minecraft really is the best. <laughs> Fuck. 
crap we're out of time. If you want to go see the full thing and also how to dance to it, the link is in my bio. I dropped my phone almost as much as I was dropped as a baby. Like, I think it's actually made of butter. I basically have a butter phone. Phone with a butter. Anyways, I really needed a case for it, but I wanted something special. So I used this app called Caseify to make a custom case with every picture of frogs that I have in my whole camera roll. And it was really easy. I just took a little frog with a little leaf. Beep, bop, boop, bang. He's on the case. I took a picture of a frog with a little watering can and beep, bop, boom. He's on the case, baby. Then every other frog. <laughs> Ding dong. The package was at my door. And I was so excited because getting packages is like my number one source of serotonin at this point. And when I opened it the packaging was like a little present from me to me because i have no one special to me to give me presents but anyways i love my little frog case and you can make your own and get 20 percent off with the code 20 high ben thank you case five I was at the Tokyo Olympics gym today, training for all the sports I'm gonna get a gold medal in. But in the middle of me training, this Edna Mode looking person came over to me, and I thought they were gonna say you aren't allowed to put the big balls in your shirt and steal them. So I was getting ready to sprint away, but they actually just complimented my phone case. And I was like, oh, did you mean my case if I case with fun little moons on it that keeps my phone safe while also looking cute? Available in so many fun, different, customizable designs. But I realized I didn't actually say it out loud, so I was like, thanks. And then they asked if my phone case had moons on it, because I like astrology. And I was like, mm, yeah. And then they like oh what sign are you and then i told them i'm a virgin oh and and then i realized i meant to say virgo and i just made this person think i've never gotten any action anyways you can get 15 percent off your very own case if i case with the code 15 high ben they are great and i highly recommend i'm gonna go cry in the corner now bye Today, I'm giving $10,000 to the employees at my local Taco Bell. I pulled up to the window and said, Hi, can I get a bean burrito, please? When I pulled up to the window, they gave me the burrito and I gave them $2. What do I look like, Mr. Beast? Plus, this box has $30 in it max. Just some Minecraft plush toys and a card if I ever went missing as a child. But then, as I was eating my Taco Bell burrito, I started feeling bad. Maybe the Taco Bell employees have little Taco Bell babies at home that need little Taco Bell diapers or they'll shed their little Taco Bell tears. And I thought, I may not have $10,000, but I can show them I appreciate them. I went home, grabbed some markers, and decided to write a little card telling them how much I appreciate them on being on the front lines of this pandemic and everything. I also thought to add a little something else, since this is already a TikTok, for every 100 k like this video gets i'll add ten dollars to the card up to a hundred dollars because i really do not be mr beast <laughs> i finished the card with some drawings of tacos because i love tacos and tonight i'll head over to taco bell and drop it off i'll see you in part two tomorrow i can only fall asleep to loud noises so tonight i played some mukbang videos on full volume and i also tried blasting that one girl who goes ah! in all of her songs and i was about to go to sleep like a baby when i heard a banging at my door and i realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named karen but when i got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door there was nothing but an envelope that said use these so i brought it inside and opened it up and she had sent me her nasty crusty earwax covered airpods that smelled like fritos and at first i was like this is a human rights violation and i'm probably diseased now until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new And then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit So I made a listing for like $150 and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff So I ubered over there and when I got there I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves and I was like That's not the safest way to do a transaction But regardless I just sprinkled the airpods by it and then went home with 150 in like four different currencies But it's okay because I just ordered a bass boosted speaker with the money from the airpods and when it comes I'm gonna have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of care. I was enjoying some banana on the cob and scrolling through TikTok when I saw someone playing this Mario Kart in real life game. So I took my friend's credit card and ordered it. But when it came in the mail and I actually got to open it up and play it, the game was about as fun as listening to Ed Sheeran out of your own free will. So not fun at all. But you know what? It was okay because I bought it for the only purpose of seeing if I could take it through a drive through and ordering something. So I strapped my credit card to it and a walkie talkie so that I can order through the microphone. And I taped it to Luigi really good and then drove all the way over to Popeyes. And it was time to release Luigi and see if I could succeed successfully order a fry. I set everything up and then just like that, the little Italian was off. But as he drove up to the microphone, I didn't think they could see him. So at first I did some donuts to get their attention. And then as I was spinning him around, they were like, <laughs> And I was about to tell them my order when I saw there was a car coming into the drive-thru. I panicked and grabbed my switch to try and drive away. But it said it was disconnected, so I ran over to the drive-thru and... Our favorite plumber, Luigi, was killed by a Mitsubishi. Anyways, the funeral is on Monday. Please comment your condolences if you would like to attend. I woke up at 4am to borrow some of my roommate's peanut butter today, but when I opened it up, I saw he's been scooping it out the jar in a really strange way, which is really inefficient, because there's just more surface area for it to dry out. But anyways, I wanted to make a peanut butter and spray cheese sandwich, but I felt like it needed some raspberries, so as I was taking the bread out of the fridge, I knocked out the raspberries. But I believe in the five minute rule instead of the five second rule, so I scooped them up and assembled my delicious sandwich, and I added the raspberries and a nice little squirt of easy cheese, and then I took a big old bite, but I started feeling really funny, and I thought I was having an allergic reaction.
reaction to that peanut butter. But then I remembered the raspberries were not exactly the freshest. And I just ate an ounce of Whoa. So I grabbed my computer and tried to call poison control. But they were closed because of Thanksgiving. And I was like, damn, I'm really going to puke my guts out because some white dudes wanted to have a feast after a mass genocide in 1621. So anyways, I decided I should probably write my will. And I opened up my notes app and said, all my money and my plant collection and my life-size Zendaya cardboard cutout will go to my dog. Thank you and goodbye forever, I guess. I was FaceTiming my best friend, Arvita Grande. And I was telling her I was bored. And that's when she told me to go on the dark side of Roblox. And I was like, how does Roblox have a dark side? It's a game made for toddlers that just made poopy in their little diapy. But I've always wanted to join a cult or like the Illuminati. So I decided I'll do it. I told my FBI agent that watches me that I might be doing something bad. And that I'd make it up to him by promising not to buy uranium off of the deep web anymore. So after I got his permission, I grabbed my laptop and logged on. First, I was climbing this tower. Oh my god, yo, X Games. My body crumbled like a Nature Valley granola bar. Then I transformed into Randy Rodriguez and had a dance party. And then people told me to go on something called Piggy, and apparently it's like a horror game on Roblox. So I played it anyways, and good lord, Peppa Pig started attacking each other. <laughs> We're out of time, but if you want to see the darkest side of Roblox, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. I was eating some raw chicken sushi when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a furry and then another furry. So I got up to see what was going on and followed them. And then there was 10 furries and 20 furries and hundreds of furries. And I realized there was a whole furry convention at the mall I was at. But um, then I remembered I just didn't pay at the restaurant. And I heard them say on the intercom. In the Greece, Peter, the police would like a bird with you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to get out of here. But these furries were everywhere. And I tried to sneak into this dark warehouse, but there was a rave going on inside. So I found a door to the outside but it was raining and had no exit and no hope until i saw someone's left behind fursuit on the ground with some stains in it but i had no other way to escape so i put it on to try and blend in and re-enter the mall and saw so many horrifying things and still couldn't find the exit and was getting actual heat strokes so i decided to just turn myself in so i went up to a cop and said i'd like to turn myself in and it was a damn utopia cop so i just bolted out of that lawless wasteland and jumped over furries to find a fire exit and made it out and stripped down and, and threw my suit in the river <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you've seen that trend where people are exploring their attics, but I've seen some spooky things, and I'm gonna try it, because I have this house that was built in the 1900s, but got renovated. And also, I've noticed that my attic has a weird light coming from inside, but no switch to control it or anything. So, I grabbed a stool, and I made it go as high as possible, because the attic was like two times my height. And then I climbed onto it, but it was really wobbly, and I started getting scared. Anyways, when I finally managed to open up the attic door, I couldn't really see inside, so I felt around for a switch with my hand, and that's when I touched a book! I picked it up, and then I jumped off the stool and ran down stairs to read it and when i looked inside it had a bunch of chinese characters i think and maybe blood i had to know what it meant so i took it to google translate and i tried my best to transcribe the chinese characters and i couldn't believe it but it said i ain't ever seen two pretty best wait a minute Bleh! you thought i was gonna make a two pretty best friends joke no the joke is dead and you just got caught slipping look in the mirror right now clown that's you pennywise anyways this has been a harvard university experiment thank you for your participation I was sitting on the floor eating a Rice Krispie snack when my dad randomly came home with a dog. We don't have a dog. We have a cat. So what is that? And I said, did you just buy a dog? And my dad told me he just bought a dog. So um, I guess I have a dog at my dad's house now. And I went to go pet it, but it keeps running away from me and looking at me like I'm a demon, which I am. <laughs> but it still made me sad. And I was sitting around trying to figure out how to become friends with this baby dog. And then I realized I could probably give it something like a treat. So I got off my butt and I went upstairs and I looked in the pantry and found some dog bones. I opened up the package and grabbed a bone and then i slowly approached him and placed it on the mat but then my dad's cat luna got in the way oh. anyways i gave it another bone and <laughs> it bit my hand so hard like three fingers fell off i had to call an ambulance just kidding uh, he let me come near and when i touched him he twitched and it scared me a little bit but then he let me pet him and now we're almost besties and i took him on a little walk and took some cute pictures with him so if you want to see more of sammy i posted the pics on my instagram at ben of the week okay bye so I was completely legally watching a movie today when I won an iPhone 13. And all I had to do was enter my social security number. So I typed it in. And then a week later, while I was blending my candles together to make a mega candle, I got a notification that a package was delivered. So I ran downstairs to grab it and the packaging was a little strange, but I cracked open the box, which apparently was for the iPhone 14. And then when I opened up that box, they had sent me a toy car. And I was like, I know I didn't just give away my identity for a Hot Wheel. And then I realized it's actually a phone. So I decided to hang up on the 911 
911 operator that I had panic called, and I checked out my new phone, and it was pretty cool until I realized it was a used phone. And I think the previous owner was someone's grandma, because I saw in her text, she wasn't just having booty calls, but a whole booty conference. Now, I didn't want this phone anymore after going into the images and seeing Granny's milkies, so I picked it up one last time and checked her contact section and noticed she had her address on there. So, I grabbed the phone and biked over to her house, which happened to be only an hour away. And when I got there, um, Granny is on her Jeff Bezos type beat. So, I decided to put my name in her contacts and then I threw the phone over the fence and I'll let you know if I slide. I was picking the ticks out of my dog's fur so I could collect them and inject them with acid until they pop. But just before I could even get to doing that, my phone went off. And when I checked it, my friends had invited me to go rollerblading with them. So I dropped what I was doing and I met them at the roller derby rink. Now I paid $10 to rent some skates, but listen, these babies were impossible to put on. And when I stood up, it felt like I had fettuccine noodles for legs. But it was actually really fun, except there was a small child who kept trying to chase me. And I'm allergic to small children, so I tried to avoid him at all costs. But then he got too close to me and... I ran him over. And in the distance, I heard some lady who I think was his mom screaming at me about her little overgrown fetus. I want so I left the roller rink and escaped into the mall. But I could still hear her screaming in the distance. So I started running. And then that's when I saw a security guard and told him that there was a psychopath chasing me. And thankfully, he snuck me out of the mall. And um, turns out she got arrested later for biting an employee. So... <laughs> Today I was flying over North Korea and trying to sleep even though there was a baby screaming behind me because it shat itself. But what really kept me awake was a song started playing that plays in like all those plane crash TikToks. And then the plane started shaking and the seatbelt sign turned off. And the plane was shaking so much that it spilled water all over my no-no square. And I thought if this plane is going down, I'm not about to be found dead looking like I peed myself. So I snuck into the bathroom even though it said seatbelts on. And I grabbed some paper towel and tried to dry it off. But it was shaking so much that I just went back to my seat. And that's when I realized the music was coming from the stupid baby behind me's iPad. Because it knocked its air pods off from sharding so aggressively so i tried to lean between the seats to turn it off but i couldn't reach it so i called over the flight attendant and asked if we could just throw the child out of the airlock but she didn't speak english and just gave me almonds so i peacefully lost my mind for seven hours and when i landed i saw the most nasty little sharder and chased after it because it left its ipad behind but when i touched it there was literal baby food on it and i dropped it and cracked the screen and then i picked it up again to check if it was working and saw the lock screen and it jump scared me and i dropped it again whoops <laughs> So I was going through my local Taco Bell drive through when I saw some money had fallen out of a customer's car in front of me. So I pulled up to pick it up and it was $200. And at first I was like, whoa, Canadian money actually does smell like maple syrup. But secondly, they probably need it. I should really leave it behind for them. Psych bitch! I went to Michael's and spent $200 on crap! Cause last time I went to Michael's, I was like a toddler with like three Robux in my bank account. So I walked in and I decided to buy whatever looked cool. I found one of those kits where you break open the geodes. So I grabbed one of those and then there was a bunch of fake fruit. And I saw they had fake bananas, so I bought a fake banana. But when I went to pay, the cashier found a bite mark on my banana and asked me if I still wanted the bitten banana. But I bought the bitten banana anyways. And then when I got home, I broke the box open because I don't own scissors. And look, it came with these fun goggles. Uh, anyways, next I went to my garage to find a hammer and then I put the geode on the ground and smacked it. And that baby blew open. And it looks kind of like a fruit gusher. So um, please let me know in the comments if I can eat these or not. Thank you. Bye. I don't know if you remember, but five years ago today, Harambe the gorilla was deworded. So I decided to take a quick trip to infiltrate the Cincinnati Zoo because I think he might still be alive and the whole thing was a publicity stunt. Anyways, when I got there, I did a bird call to attract some birds to land on me as a disguise and it worked. A bunch of gay chickens landed on me and I had the perfect disguise. I was walking around looking like a zoo employee, which let me sneak into the employees only area with no suspicion. I was walking around in the back rooms when I tried saying hi to the employees, but they were busy cleaning fish doogie, so I stopped to pet some stingrays because I couldn't find Harambe's enclosure and then I pet some sharks and they were so cool just like a little bit slimy and then I saw some jellyfish and they're so pretty so I reached in the pet where am I? the place you go when you pet a jellyfish stupid oh well let me see my favorite thing to do right now is guess people's passwords of their social media accounts because I've actually managed to successfully hack a few accounts. And I also enjoy changing some captions around without people noticing and tagging myself so people think me and Zendaya are besties. So today I managed to log into Sean Mendez's account and then I decided to DM some people some pickup lines like Olivia Rodrigo, which might have made me responsible for him and Camila Kabubu breaking up, but anyways, today I wanted to get into Instagram's Instagram account to, I don't know, post a picture of myself or something. And then I remember the guy who owns Instagram is Mark Zuckerberg. So when I tried logging in with a bunch of different passwords and none were working, I realized it kept asking me if I'm not a robot. And since old Marky Poo is a robot, I left it blank and then boom, I was in, baby. And I was stressed about what I should post to like 400 million people. So I just chose this random picture of me at the beach and now half a million people have liked it. So thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for the validation. I 
I was burning down a village in Minecraft. When I realized I haven't had human contact in four months. Since the pandemic, I've lost all social skills. When I went to the store to buy some foot cream, I screamed because I saw a live human with skin and hair. And I immediately ran out of the store. I forgot that there are like 7 billion people that exist outside my house and do their own thing. It took me a decade to learn how to have a normal conversation with strangers without my social anxiety taking over. And I don't feel like going through that again. So, I decided to go live in the wilderness. I was walking around and found a really cool mushroom on the ground. And I was feeling a little hungry, so I popped it in my mouth. But all of a sudden, I felt dizzy. And that's when I tripped and passed out. I woke up to my dog trying to eat me. Really? Already? I raised her for 10 years and it took her two hours in the forest to eat me? Anyways, I didn't think I was going to make it much longer, so I wrote my story in the mud for anyone who finds me. My name is Ben. The hunger is no match for me as I lay in this meadow behind a Home Depot. Well, I'm going home. Today, I went into Panda Express and I said, Uh, cook me a panda and make it express. But all they had was tofu, so I walked out. And when I got home, I started eating my non-panda food and I started choking on a fortune cookie. And I screamed, ah, I'm choking. And then I dramatically fell off my chair, knocking over everything thing and I was gone. Okay, so I faked that entire situation to see if anyone would actually come save me and I looked out the window and there was no ambulance and I went downstairs and Zendaya wasn't at the door ready to bring me back to life with mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR and I started panicking because anything could happen and no one would save me. Like, I could be doing the Macarena and my heart could just be like, peace out! And no one would see me dramatically fall to the ground. Or an intruder could come rob me of all my Minecraft decor and I could be screaming and no one would save me. And then I realized nothing really matters. So I put on my inflatable frog costume and I ran down the street at 3 a.m. I saw some man in the bush giving tattoos and I let him give me one for four dollars because my brain is spiraling. So if you want to see the tattoos I got, I just posted them on my Instagram. Okay, bye. Okay, so I bought one of those things that lets you FaceTime your dog and shoot treats at them. But today I was looking at the camera and I noticed that she's been taking all her treats behind the couch for some reason. So I went to go see what she was doing with them and um, she's been storing them so that she can pretend like I never gave her one in the first place and then ask for more like the fat little bitch she is. And yes, I can call her that because bitch means female dog, and she is a female dog. Anyways, I had enough of her scamming me, so I decided to empty out the treat machine and fill it with her least favorite treat. Green beans, baby! I put a bean on the plate and cut it up into small little pieces, and then I loaded it into the machine, and I shot it out at her, and at first she didn't want to eat it, but then she got bored, and she ate them, and I was so happy because I thought I got her on a diet, until I heard a weird coughing noise come from downstairs. I ran downstairs to see what was happening, and that's when I saw her in my beanbag bed next to the beans when she had three. Oh no, I got beans in my bed! Today, I pretended to be in the hospital to get my celebrity crush to notice me. And here's how I did it. First, I was editing my name onto a hospital band, and one of the rows said sex. So I said, yes, winky face. <laughs> and then I walked over to my printer that I haven't used in years, and I thought it was going to light on fire, and somehow that old mama worked, and it printed out my band. So I cut it out and put it on my wrist. Drip, my drip, my drip. Yeah. And then I tore my bed apart, and I ripped the bed sheet off my bed to wear as a little hospital robe. Then once I had that, I pulled my bed off and dragged it over to a blank wall. <laughs> Anyways, then I made my room look like a hospital by taping hospital hospital signage and then i laid down in my hospital bed and i made the finishing touches with a phone charger and then i put some headphones in my nose to really pull it all together then i finally took my snapchat and i added a black and white filter to be all dramatic and i made the caption down bad wish i had a big booty b to give me cpr and i sent it to her then i ripped all the cords out and the bracelet too and i put my shirt back on and i was waiting around when she finally replied and when i opened it she said I was inhaling Lucky Charms in my desolate room for breakfast when I realized it is time for a whole room makeover. But I didn't want any boring room. I wanted a complete Minecraft room makeover, baby. I didn't have any supplies or Minecraft merch, so I Ubered over to Target and I went to the home section and I got like a pillowcase, a blanket, a whole freaking comforter that's Minecraft themed. And then I paid for it. I went home and I prepared for the transformation. I took the old pillowcase off and slipped on my brand new Minecraft reversible pillowcase and hung up a Minecraft pickaxe above my bed so I can defend myself if someone robbed my house and even though it's foam and someone robbing me will probably have something not as soft as foam it's still pretty cool anyways i put the comforter on the bed and then i hung up a creeper blanket above my bed but i was missing one final touch i saw a tiktok a while ago of someone minecraftifying their window so i grabbed some tape and followed the pattern from the minecraft window pane and then boom minecraft windows baby wait oh we're out of time but if you want to see everything i added and how it turned out the link to the youtube video is in my bio <laughs> This morning, I woke up and could feel the jumbo-sized bag of mini eggs that I ate the night before rumbling in my stomach. And I decided today, I'm gonna see how far I can physically run until I pass out. So, I made some Shrek toast for breakfast, and I put on my running outfit, and then I hit the street. I started running and quickly realized that I have to pass Chipotle and KFC and Subway, and they all smell so good. But I ignored it, and I saw a place selling... 
strawberry. And then I saw the river and I wanted to swim in it, but I saw a rat floating on a turd, so maybe not. Then I ran under a bridge and got yelled at and it was very frightening. And I passed a dance lessons place, but it's apparently pole dancing, but like I can do that too. Ah. Then I saw the world's biggest bird poop. Like I think a pterodactyl had to do that. What in the world? Then I passed more food and there was a sign that was so complicated. And then, ooh, an avocado truck. And I chased the avocado truck because I wanted one. And then it was about to hit me. And ah. Then I realized I had hallucinated that and I was actually severely dehydrated. And I felt like I was going to pass out and the mountain was like right there, but I couldn't do it. So I called an Uber and when he arrived, I got in, but I was so weak that I passed out. When I woke up, I realized I accidentally ordered it to Guatemala. So, hola, estoy varado en un pe since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the Global Pandemic is officially over. They might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So, I went to the gas station and i licked the debit keypad and then i licked my fingers after typing in my pin which is one two three four and then after that i went to panda express and i enjoyed some yummy shrimp but when i was driving home i felt the covid 21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and i went home and i fell to my bed and i started coughing when all of a sudden i coughed up a piece of lego but i kept coughing and eventually i had enough lego pieces to build a little lego house so maybe covid 21 isn't that bad Today, I spent nine hours painting Doja Cat, and it turned out so good that I decided to DM it to her. And she actually replied by saying, it's terrific. And I was just in disbelief that she replied, so I screenshotted it as fast as I could and posted it on my story to show all my friends. But after she saw it, she DM'd me a picture of the front of my house and my birth certificate. And when I said, yeah, yes, it is Doja Cat, <laughs> I saw she mentioned me in her story. And, and when I looked, she had posted both of those images on her story. And, and I was like, Doja, why would you do that? And then she went live and was very angry at me. And the next thing i knew there were people banging on my front door and then one of them threw something through my window and i had no clue what it is so i slowly approached it but when i got too close it started to fill my room with gas and i heard on her live stream and she said careful of the tear gas we are getting gas so I grabbed what I could and ran out of my house and saw a flyer on the telephone pole for witness protection. And I called them and had to throw away my passport and credit cards. And now I'm flying to New Zealand to start a new life. Thanks, Doja Cat. Today, I hiked up to the Hollywood sign, but there was a fence blocking access to it. So I committed a little bit of a crime. And I managed to get through and I changed the sign to Holly Boo by covering the W with a B for Boo. Anyways, I was walking down and I saw helicopters flying overhead and I was getting kind of nervous. So I ran into the bushes and I hid from them because apparently I was on government property or whatever that that means. Anyways, I got an emergency alert on my phone, and when I checked, it said that there was a $2 million bounty for a six-foot man in green. So I realized I'll have to live off the grid forever in these bushes, with my only food being Lady Gaga Oreos that I brought as a snack. Anyways, I managed to sneak away to a swamp, but I heard the choppers getting closer. But that's when I looked in the distance and saw none other than a six-foot man in green in the swamp. I had to act fast, so I grabbed my phone and I dialed 911 and I ratted on Shrek. Anyways, Shrek was arrested and charged with eight felonies, and I got a $2 million reward. So now I'm rich, and I bought a mansion thanks shrek today i snuck an air tag tracking device into an ed sheeran concert so that i could somehow stick it onto him to track him down because that's for the fbi no. anyways randomly bts opened for him and then eddie was about to come on stage so i had the genius idea to use an extra mask and fashion it into a slingshot so that when he performed i walked up to the front of the stage locked onto my target and bam it flew through the air and now i know there's no way of it sticking to him however they have to pack up the stage and it's probably gonna travel with him so anyways i saw doja cat and lil nas x and then left the concert and went home. Then the next morning, I was getting a reading on the AirTag Finder, and it said that he was in Las Vegas. So I flew to Las Vegas, and when I got to the airport, I thought I had already found him, but the thing is, I had a little bit of spicy grape juice on the plane. So I stumbled over to the man and shouted, Ed! And it was just a random man. So, um, yeah. I recently turned 21, and I realized I've never been D-word before. And now I finally get yes! uh, Please ignore the fact that this is my license picture. Anyways, I was ready to drink some go-go juice. I'm not talking about these, although they are very fire. And I wanted to drink my first, uh, legal drink at the one-of-a-kind special Taco Bell in Las Vegas that you can get married at or get Baja Blast Margaritas with a Lucifer's Jucifer in it. So I packed my bags and I flew to Las Vegas. I was walking around looking for it and I saw the Statue of Liberty. But then it started getting dark and I was getting really tired until I found the Taco Bell. The screen asked if I was 21 and then it asked what kind of Alka Bryce Hall I wanted in my Baja Blast. And then they started making it. And here she was, a foot-long Baja Blast sending me straight to hell, mama. I drank about a half of it and like, I was running around screaming. Anyways, I finally made it back to the hotel 
hotel and decided to take a jacuzzi bath. And while I was in that jacuzzi, I took some scandalous pictures. So if you want to go check them out, my Instagram is Ben of the Week. So I've been waiting for this day for a month now. That's because today is the delivery day for my brand new iPhone 12 Pro Max 500 iPhone 12 Pro Max, 512 gigabytes Pacific Blue Color. And yeah, it was $2,000, but it's got really good speakers, so I bring it in the shower, and it's really fun to just... Ah! Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, guys, so actually now I have an Android. Um, It was all I could afford after paying $2,000 just to break my iPhone, but um, it's really fun. It um, what are those monstrosities? Absolutely not! Hey guys, so now I'm using the Vizio Smart TV that I found behind a dumpster after walking through a local junkyard. And the screen is really big, but that's okay, because it's great for watching TikToks, and I really love- Oh, f- Oh no. Oh no. So now I'm coming to you live from my brand new Sunbeam Ultra Crisp 2-in-1 toaster, and it's actually kind of better than the Android. But, uh, the phone disconnected again. Let me fix that real quick. Oh no. Hey guys, so I'm actually coming to you live from hell now, where I'm currently burning. So today was April Fools, and I got a doorbell notification, which I thought was strange, because I'm not expecting any packages. And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house, and I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a... You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside, and realized it makes vegetable pasta. And I was so excited, so I opened it up, but... There was no baguette. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago, I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because- I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen so i found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that i slid under and then i popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm so i was running as fast as i could and i happened to drop the air fryer but i had to hide so i managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and i thought i was safe until <laughs> I woke up on some cliffs, on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said Please, they won't let me air fry Elizabeth, I will save you my dearest Mima once told me, the circle of life is everywhere. That's why today I'm using her ashes to season my baked salmon for supper. I get all my seafood fresh from the sewer drain behind my local prison, because my uncle taught me when I was a young boy that if you take headphones with a phone attached playing Ed Sheeran and leave them by a sewer drain overnight, the fish in the sewers will sewer side. And when you check back the next day, you'll have plenty of fish ready for the lunch. Now, I'm not using any seasoning other than Mima herself, because I'm half white and my Mima told me that seasoning is the devil. Plus, the fish is already marinated in toxic chemicals to give it a little bit of a kick from the sewer runoff. I throw it in the oven at 400 degrees, and once it's done and I take it out, I finish it with a few more ashes. And then I finally take my first bite. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I have Mima stuck in my throat from the dryness, so instead of her ashes getting spread at Disneyland, they're getting spread in this toilet. Bye, Mima. So, I was trying to buy a tiger online so that my dog could have a little friend to play with. And I found one for $5. I thought in my head, this is such a great deal. It sounds so legitimate. The dude selling it was named Barbara, and he sent me a picture of a shipping container with his address and saying, Make me hair, winker face. I was like, uh, what a welcoming and sweet dude. I told Barbara, okay. And I went outside and hopped in my car, looked at my reflection and scared myself, put my seatbelt on, of course, and then drove eight hours to go to his container house. I only crashed into one lane. <laughs> When I got there, I could hear circus music playing from the inside. I got out of my car and slowly approached the container. It kind of smelled like something rotting, but I really wanted my $5 tiger. I was about to go in, but guys, come on. Do you really think I'd do that? We have to social distance. So I'm waiting until after the pandemic to meet up with an unknown man named Barbara to buy a tiger from him for $5. So I had just finished dropping my uncle off at the local prison so he could turn himself in for burning down nine different Taco Bells. Anyways, I was driving home and I checked my mirror and caught a reflection of me and I remembered how much I don't like myself and I literally feel like I look like Donkey from Shrek and no one will ever truly really love me because no one will love me.
Yeah, so it actually turns out that I was parked on a portal to hell that day. Anyways, I'm trying to get my car towed back from hell to earth. Wait a minute. How come I went to hell? I've only ever slapped like three babies. Okay, maybe four. Anyways, I had been on a journey. I was hungry like you would not believe, and I was really craving some Taco Bell until I remembered my uncle burned them all down. Hi, here are some things from elementary school that you definitely forgot existed. I think these things were called pennies, but they smell like penis because they were never washed. Everyone who did this to their erasers are in jail now. These would always take me at least an hour to do, but the person sitting next to me had it done in a minute flat. These chairs right here were so staticky, they had a longer battery life than an iPhone 10. You have not known pain until you run your finger over with one of these. Do y'all remember that trend where people would draw their entire life story? Well, I'm gonna be the first TikToker to do it. Hi, I'm Ben, and I was born at zero years old in Edmonton, Canada. Right when I was born, my parents and I moved from Canada to Massachusetts, United States. And my mom would take me to the beach a lot to collect rocks until one day a nuclear reactor almost melted down, so we stopped going there. When I started school, I was low-key really big-brained, and I was such a smart cookie that they put me in the smart kids class. That was until I found out that smart kid class is seven hours a day, not three hours like preschool was. So I literally ran out of the classroom to escape, and when the teacher caught me, I kicked her in the thigh and gave her a permanent bruise. So I feel bad about that. Anyways, I got a dog named Kobe and I love her so much. I can't draw her. So here's her on the table The middle school I went to was really yeah, and I was the only brown kid there. So I got bullied Oh crap, I'm out of time If you want to see more about that and how I was an exchange student in Japan and my girlfriend the link to the YouTube video is in my bio So I was making a delicious quarantine meal of salad and licorice aka diabetes salad when something <laughs> caught my eye outside my kitchen window I looked across my yard to see my neighbor had left a message for me. I immediately thought bruh, I'm about to have a Taylor Swift music video love story, but then I remember that my neighbor is a 72-year-old grandma named Myrtle that smells like moldy peas. I looked closer and saw that her sign just said hello. I thought, okay, she seems pretty friendly, so I grabbed some paper and decided to write a note back. I scribbled down, hi Myrtle, and drew some hearts. I ran upstairs to my window, left it there overnight, hoping that I could have some fun with that elderly bag of bones and skin. Then the next morning, I ran upstairs to see what she'd written back. So anyways, I'm currently hiding in my basement with my dog and my Animal Crossing trying to figure out what to say back. Please help, I'll reply in part two. Today I looked in the mirror and thought, hmm, that's not me. That's a skinny little stick bug. I've had no motivation to go get up and make a proper meal for the past month that I look like a stick bug. I'll eat maybe one brownie that has no nutritional value and then go back to bed at 2 p.m. Or I'll eat four tortilla chips and then say, bon appetit, baby, dinner served. So I thought if there's ever been a time to get so many muscles, I look like a cumulonimbus cloud and drift off into the atmosphere, it's now. What I lacked was motivation. So to get a good jump start to my insane Dwayne The Rock Johnson workout routine, I went outside in freezing weather completely naked into the snow. In addition to giving myself hypothermia, my elderly neighbor Myrtle saw my lovely peaches and had a heart attack. To try and warm up before I literally die, I put my Crocs into sport mode and started running on the treadmill. And like, it wasn't that bad until I sneezed. I accidentally hit the 10 miles per hour button instead of the 2 miles per hour that I was leisurely walking at. And well, I took a little bit of a tumble. I woke up 10 minutes later feeling a little bit tingly to look down and see that my foot had fallen off. Anyways, now I only use the treadmill to serve myself English muffins because I can't walk. Someone thousands of years ago looked at this cute little animal and thought, Ooga booga, we will cook and eat it! But then they saw this little one and they're like, Guys, we can't cook and eat this one. This one we're gonna name Oreo and put a little bow tie on it. But then they saw this one and they thought, Double combo! We're gonna cook and eat this one and then we're also gonna play with a little dangly thing that hangs by its butthole until it shoots out white liquid and then we're gonna drink it and not ask any questions. And then they saw this one. I decided to eat this too despite it looking like a demon! I've been quarantined for 18 days now. I know it's only supposed to be 14 days, but I went and got tested a week ago and they never called me back. Did they maybe call me three times to tell me the results and I declined it because I have phone anxiety? Maybe. At least I got a free mask. Anywho, I'm sitting here after waking up at 8 p.m. because my sleep schedule is worse than the song Dance Monkey, and I thought to myself, if I woke up one morning and didn't feel too good, and then all of a sudden I just pass away like that, like bada bing, bada boom, gone, no one, literally no one, would know. My local Taco Bell might wonder why no one orders five chalupas in one order anymore. Or maybe my dog will eat me and realize she doesn't have an owner and then leave the house to start a new life. And then she's driving to work one day and someone stops her car and says, Hey, is that a dog driving that car? And then it hit me that it would likely be months until someone discovered me and I'd probably be covered in wasps and maggots and- Hey, that got really dark. Do you know the plural term for platypus is platypi? They have venomous claws. Anyways, I'm gonna go cry now. Bye. So, um, I'm freaked out right now because I was looking through my mom's Facebook pictures and in three different pictures from three different trips, there is the same man. I can't tell who he is because like the pictures are so blurry, but I just got this program and ran it all night that enhances the picture quality and the pictures just finished processing. So I'm about to go look.
I've been spinning in my nightmares. Is, is someone here? I was screaming into the void because I had dropped 10 pounds of protein powder on my pinky toe until I realized I'm almost at 5 million followers on here. Now, I can't even count to 5 because last week I crashed into a telephone pole while going too hard to Oh my god! Which gave me brain damage and memory loss. Oh my gosh, I just realized I'm almost at 5 million followers. I want to celebrate by eating 5 million olives because I love them so much. But when I opened my fridge, I only had one jar. So obviously I called a place where all olives come from. Olive Garden. They said to stop calling or they'll call the police. And I told them, if if your breadsticks really are unlimited, then you should act like it and I won't light my table on fire in a fit of rage. But then they hung up and I realized I'd burned down every other Olive Garden in my city. So I thought I'll make my own Olive Garden. I drove over to an old abandoned restaurant, planted some olive trees and decided to dedicate my life to harvesting the olives until I have 5 million to share with you guys. So come on down to Olive Garden. Listen, I don't wanna get sued. So I was trying to make carbonated mayonnaise with my mom's soda stream and although it splattered everywhere, I had the idea. What if I made a meal with every single expired thing in my house? There are children with no food starving somewhere and if I can reduce my waste, well, they'll probably still be starving, but at least no food will be wasted. First, I grabbed an onion that's been sitting behind the toilet for some reason for five years. I chopped it up and cried because it's an onion. And then I smelled it and it smelled like Trek's toast, so I threw up. I put the onion in a bowl and then I grabbed Aunt Jemima syrup. It expired three years ago, but Miss Jemima doesn't look a day over 60. I poured the syrup on the onions and then grabbed a bean curd snack and said it was expired, so I threw it in the bowl anyways. Then I grabbed a frozen glove of beans and tried to break it open, but I had to use a shovel and I ended up just cutting off a bean finger, but I wanted lots, so I just threw the whole thing in. And I finished it off with some chia seeds that expired in 1998. How have they not become chia trees yet? Then I threw it in the microwave, haha, <laughs> beans in the microwave, and I gave it 100 minutes. I tried eating it, but unsurprisingly, I threw up after mixing every rotten thing in my house together. Okay, love you, bye. So I was using the gibberish filter when something really weird happened. Okay, uh, here we go. I am in your house uh, ben of thou week. <laughs> what does that mean? And I was like, that's a little bit weird. And then my power went out. I was sitting in complete darkness, except for a line of text that lit up on my computer that said, I'm right in, in front of you. I thought, am I being hacked? So I grabbed my phone and opened up a iPad and deleted all my Harry Styles fanfics I've been writing since I was in middle school. But then the hacker said, I, I think I love you. So I told him, I don't think it's going to work out. And the hacker replied, if I can't have you, the world can have this. And he had leaked all of my Harry Styles fanfics from when I was 12. Harry Styles grabs your neck and whispers in your ear. I have one direction, but without the D in direction, if you know what I mean. I was enjoying a delicious cabbage snack when I got the idea, I'm gonna go make friends with random strangers on the internet. So I put my baby cabbage back in the fridge and went downstairs with my laptop and logged into Omegle. The first thing I saw was someone holding their ah! And then I met a mime that was copying everything I did and then another person showed their ah! So then I went upstairs into the bathroom to grab a tissue and poured dish soap on it to wash my eyes up from what I had just seen. And then I took the dish soap and made a prayer circle on the floor around me to cleanse my soul, but I slipped on the snow. Anyways, there was a lot of screaming and then I went back on Omegle and saw a freaking clown that scared the crap out of me and then i panicked some more until i decided to go back on one more time that's when i got matched with someone who sounded really familiar like their voice sounded like some famous rapper and i asked them do i know you but then they showed their face and it was we ran out of time on tiktok but the full video is on my youtube channel the link is in my bio i was at the dentist getting a piece of road removed from my mouth because last week i was on a leisurely walk when i saw a piece of chocolate on the ground and i was like oh, a dog could eat that and get sick and also free chocolate so i popped it in my mouth no questions asked only to discover that it wasn't chocolate it was in fact tar from a road that they were paving. So anyways, they were taking it out when I saw something weird on the TV screen. It was like hypnotism or something. I could barely stay away again. Next thing I knew, I was frolicking through a field of flowers while Gummy Bear played in the disc. <gasps> All of a sudden, I woke up in the middle of nowhere. My mouth felt really funny. I opened up my mouth to see that they had stolen all of my teeth. I fell to the ground and cried as I realized I'll never be able to eat tortilla chips or smile ever again. In that very moment of despair, a meteor landed right in front of me, sending chunks flying. Out of curiosity, I picked one up and it sent me back in time to five seconds before. So I picked up a piece of time travel rock, popped in my mouth, and next thing I knew, I was shooting tapioca balls for my boba tea at strangers on the street when I saw a weird light flash out of the corner of my eye. And I'm in an Airbnb and I always hear about them having secret cameras to spy on people. So I started getting anxious and I looked around to try and find the camera and I peeked in the toaster oven and I saw the flash to my right. So I looked through some decorative grass thinking it could be in there, but all I found was a cute little mini red croc keychain. So I put on my backpack because it's kind of cute. And that's when across the street in the parkade, I saw a flash go off and I realized it's the paparazzi. I can't go anywhere without them showing up. Hey, yo, Ben of the Week, is it true that 
you have zero friends and no one likes you and you smell like a waste processing facility? <laughs> Anyways, the made up situation in my head made me cry myself to sleep in the bathtub. And when I woke up, I went into the kitchen to grab some seaweed for breakfast. When I remember that my camera is my security camera to watch me while I'm locked up in the loony bin and I'm not in an Airbnb, I'm locked up. Hi, my name is Ben and I've lost my grasp on reality. So I had just finished filling out all my private information and passwords to claim my free MacBook Pro that I won from this one email I got until I heard a knock at my door. I was feeling a little bit scared because it was 3 a.m. But I remembered I gave them my social security number, so that means they're gonna keep me safe. I was gonna go turn my computer off and head upstairs to check the door, but it said that a virus was shutting it down for me. Now, I don't want the coronavirus, but if it's gonna start doing things for me, well then, homegirl can like, get it. I crept upstairs so I wouldn't wake up my dog, and I opened up the door, but like, there was no one there. Then I heard a weird sound come from downstairs and saw that my computer was on. I'm like, I thought Miss Corona turned it off. There was a message on the screen from a hacker saying, I'm watching you? I started screaming because I don't know how to process conflict any other way. But then I was surprised to see a message that said, your outfit's cute. Listen, I'm so starved for human attraction that we fell in love. I'm Ben and you're watching Hack Into My Heart, the new reality TV show on TLC. Hey guys, I'm really sad to announce that my dog Kobe is gone. Cause she's a freaking sheep now! Look at how long her fur is. This pandemic has closed every single dog grooming place in my town. Leaving my dog usually looks like a rat into a sheep. But I finally found one that was open. It's me! I have a pair of scissors, so I'm gonna give her a haircut right now. I was about to make the first snip when I realized how bad the haircut that I gave myself was. So I decided to leave it to the pros. I put her leash on, headed out the door, and popped her in the car. Now we were driving to the groomers, but there was a Karen driving right in my butt cheeks. Cause I was going so slow. But like, that's my baby. I'm gonna drive slow. So I dropped some nails at my window and Karen hit the ditch. Anyways, it was finally time to drop her off. I pulled her out of the car and told her she's the goodest girl. And then I dropped her off. I cried a lot driving home, but if you want to see what she looks like shaved, I'll post her on my Instagram story at Ben of the Week. I drove to Walmart today because I wanted to buy walls. <laughs> okay, anyways, I was walking around Walmart to find a pumpkin, and I found a WAP pumpkin, and I had to take a seat and gather the thoughts in my head. <laughs> anyways, I was looking through the store, and I found the candle section, and this purple one smelled really good, so I bit into it for no reason. I don't know why I did it. And it tasted like dirt, so I put it back, but I realized it would spread COVID, so I just bought it. Then, I got a pumpkin carving kit and a wig for fun, and then finally a pumpkin, and I left the store, actually having paid for my items from Walmart for once, and I went home and wondered how pumpkins are grown, and imagine if people had to give birth to pumpkins. <laughs> anyways, I opened the carving tools, and then and I flew out and almost stabbed me. But then I decided to make an Among Us pumpkin and began cutting into it. And it took a lot of work and it was kind of nasty touching pumpkin guts. Ugh, we're out of time on TikTok, but I'm going to post the finished results on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. I was crying face down on the floor in my plate of taquitos because I can't figure out how to do any TikTok dances. But they look so fun. When I try and follow one, it feels like I'm reading Japanese while blindfolded. But today I'm changing that. It is unacceptable that I have 5.5 million TikTok followers and have never posted a dancing video. So today I'm learning one and I'm not stopping until until I get it. I chose to do yodeling Haley's dance to money trees because it just looks so fun and easy. And it's definitely fun, but after sweating so much that I had to change shirts three different times, my conclusion is that it is not easy for me. I got the first part down where it's like, get this dough. But then I watch it over and realize I'm missing a huge part. The facial expressions. I look like I'm in pain when I dance. But I can't be looking like I just ate a candle and haven't gone to the bathroom in two weeks if I want this dance to look good. So I forced myself to smile in the mirror for an hour straight so I don't look constipated. And then I tried the dance again and I got it. Like I actually got it. And I just posted it on this account. So uh, tell me how it did. I was swinging on a jungle swing in the jungle and I was enjoying myself when I saw a screw fall out of the top and the rope snapped and I tumbled down the mountain. When I woke up, I didn't know where I was and there was like people sword fighting and squirrels fighting and I tried running from the squirrels that were like everywhere and I thought to myself, who is this many squirrels? And I looked into the distance and saw a chocolate factory and then behind a tree emerged Willy Wonka himself. I waved at him and he told me to eat this chocolate to be transported to a place where I can take all the candy I want. So I picked it up, put it in my mouth and I fell asleep again. When I woke up this this time, I was at a candy store, so I grabbed as much candy as I could. And when I was done, I walked out. But apparently, it was a grocery store, and I just shoplifted all that candy, and Willy Wonka had lied to me, and I ran away from the FBI that was chasing me, but they caught me and threw me in a jail cell. But it's okay, because I still have my fruit snacks and candy. Yeah.
Can you imagine if TikTok actually did get banned? Like how boring life would be? You'd be walking your dog when someone drives by playing Say So by Doja Cat and you do the dance only to remember a time of laughter and fun and you fall to the ground in tears and you let go of your dog's leash and she runs away. So now you've got no dog. And you try to make yourself feel better by looking at some dogs on TikTok, but you can't because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Since there's nothing left for you, you decide to join the Amish colony near you and you churn butter and farm onions for the rest of your life until one day they catch you playing Animal Crossing on a Nintendo Switch and excommunicate you from the colony. You barely make it out of there with your onion collection and you run off into a field in the middle of nowhere and okay I don't know how to finish this, but I just want to say if tiktok does get banned I'm forever grateful for your support. <laughs> I won't be going anywhere because I post every saturday on youtube and i'm super active on instagram So if you enjoy my videos, uh, please, please, please go follow me on those platforms. It means a lot. Love you Hiya, here's your food. Thanks, dude. Um, you didn't take oh, uh, I only have two dollars. Oh, you know what I have? Your address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um. Yeah, I can literally, like, take you out. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, does your family live here? Uh, yeah. Uh, why? Oh, sweet. Uh, my uncle actually eats families. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> Crap, what, uh, what kind of sauce do you want? Oh, I didn't order any sauce. <laughs> okay, well, will barbecue work when my uncle eats your family? <laughs> Oh, dude, I think you have a gas leak in your house. Wait, like, for real? Yeah, can I go check it out for you? Oh, right, yeah, for sure, come on in. Okay, sick. Okay, so, uh, the kitchen's right here if you want to check it there. Hmm. Well, like, are you able to find it? Oh, I know exactly where it is. <coughs> hey, I ordered vegan taquitos. Is there cheese in this? Why, yes, there is. <laughs> um, I'm lactose intolerant. And you're the gas leak. <laughs> so it is currently just... <laughs> And the pandemic has gotten on my last nerve. So I bought a coronavirus vaccine off of Wish.com for only $20,000. And I had to wait two months for it to come. But then it finally arrived in this huge crate that I could barely lift up the stairs. But I opened up the box and I pulled the vial out. I wasn't sure how to take it, but I wasn't going to use a needle because I am needleophobic. So I put some of it in my juice bottle and I drank it and I was feeling pretty okay. And I went to go test it out by licking as many public surfaces as I could for an hour straight. Then as I was walking home, I started to feel a little dizzy. And when I finally got home, I double-checked the packaging, only to realize they had sent me a vial of Obama bathwater. And there was no vaccine. I took the vial and flushed it down the toilet, but then I remembered, Oh, uh, you can't flush glass down the toilet. And then I heard a bang, and I ran outside to go see what it was. And all the pipes had exploded on my street, and there was doo-doo water everywhere. And I had caused a disaster. But the one good thing was, I saw Remy the Ratatouille floating on a piece of cheese. And I said, hi, Remy, as he sailed off into the drain. Today, I walked to Starbucks to get the brand new Ariana Grande drink. <laughs> Travis Scott meal suck fat butthole. So I'm curious to see what Ariana drinks. I finally got there, and when I ordered, I said, I'd like the grande, please. And they were like, the grande what? And I said, the grande. And they were like, the grande what? And then I said, the Ariana Grande! And then they said, okay, that'll be $69.69. And I was shocked at how expensive it was, but I paid. And they brought my drink out, and I waited until I was home to drink it. And when I was finally ready, I uncovered my eyes to look at it, and it was just a grande cup with a bug in it! And I screamed out of horror, and I grabbed the cup, and I ran to the street to dispose of it, and I winded up my throat, and I walked as it flew through the air and then came crashing down and I watched as the Ariana Grande drink bled across the pavement with the bug's life flashing before its eyes. So overall, I would rate the Ariana Grande drink at Starbucks a 3 out of 10. I accidentally swallowed the bug and it started feasting on my internal organs. I was sticking sticky pickles to walls in case a fickle old man walking by saw a nickel but tripped on a loaf of pumpernickel reaching for the nickel and got himself in a pickle. But as he wiggled on the ground, he saw a fickle trickle of pickle juice run down the wall and could wiggle towards the pickle and have himself a little nibble, giving him the energy to run as fast as a missile. But along the way, he jiggled because uh, the man in this riddle ate too many Skittles. I should stick to just eating a little pickle as a snack so that his health isn't crippled, ending him up in the hospital. Anyways, the man went home after being saved by the pickle and wiggled into his simple yet fiscal home and sat on his brittle chair to relax and whistle and play the fiddle and enjoy a giggle while eating his peanut brittle and maybe even a Skittle. But he got bored and turned on WAP and little by little he wiggled and jiggled and made that old booty dribble. I woke up to a text from a friend saying I need to turn on the TV. So I grabbed the remote and turned it on to see my face on the news! YouTube influencer Ben of the Week posted this video where he hacked classes. Just three months ago, I made a YouTube video where I joined some people's Zoom calls. Anyways, this boomer journalist who looks like if you blended together every Karen in the universe called me a hacker. In some cases, teachers ended the Zoom. In others, they simply removed the hacker from the meeting. How in the frick are you gonna call me a hacker when half the time I'm trying to log into this app and I forget my own password and can't even get into my own account? Anyways, I grabbed my laptop and looked right in the camera where I know my FBI agent is watching me. And I told the homie that I was never gonna do it again because my Zoom account actually got banned last time. And then I closed my computer and enjoyed some peace. 
And then I got bored and opened up my laptop and went right back on Zoom, baby. I think there's a spider on your wall. A spider? Oh, you know And what? then I joined a bunch more classes. And if you want to see the full video before it gets on the news again, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I just got back from the gas station with my usual gas station order of six whole jars of peanut butter, mac and cheese flavored ravioli, and hot extra flaming hot Cheetos. But I made the grave mistake of touching my eyes with spicy Cheeto dust on my fingers. It instantly burned me and knocked me over from the pain. And I was writhing around on the floor trying to make it stop, but it was too late. I went Cheeto blind. Everything around me went dark and I realized I have to learn sign language now. Oh, wait, no, that's not correct. I cried out for help when I heard a voice say, Hello? And I was so confused because there's no one else in my house. But I followed the voice anyways, and it asked me what my name was. And I said, Tony Lopez. Because if it's the FBI in my house, I'm not Ben. I don't know who that person is. I was finally standing right next to the voice, and I reached out to touch it, and it was a doll. I'm not playing with no Annabelle. So I screamed and ran into my room and stood against the door. And then it started trying the doorknob to try and get in, and I screamed even more, only for it to slip a note underneath the door. Now, I've seen horror movies, and anytime the demon says, that they mean it welcome to my best possessed friend only on tlc okay so i found some weird tic tac looking things in the bathroom that weren't mine and i was pretty bored so i ate them all and i felt like i was in the show euphoria stranger <laughs> But I thought they would be tropical fruit flavored, but they were very much not. And I started wondering what they actually are, and I looked in the drawer where I found them, and they were growth capsules? I was confused, but I got super excited, because I want to be eight feet tall and stomp on all the people that walk slow, and just tower over everyone stomping on it. Oh, wait, they're actually, um, foam animal pills that grow in water? I started freaking out, because I can barely digest Taco Bell, so I don't think I can digest that. And I grabbed a bunch and put them in water to see what animal was growing inside me, and when I pulled the foam out and looked at the diagram... Uh, it was a horse! And you know what? I embraced it. I became my true calling of a horse boy. And I put on my four shoes on all four of my hoofs. And then I played every horse's favorite song right now. And I ran off into the world to start a new life. Yeah, one day. This morning I woke up to see that the internet was trying to cancel the Demilios for not eating snails. Stop! Y'all are telling me you've never been overdramatic when your parents cooked food you didn't like? So you made a fuss about it? Yeah, I know you did. Snails are disgusting, just to be clear. I wouldn't care if Gordon Ramsay cooked me an entire dish with snails, because if I bit into a snail thinking it was a mushroom, I would spit it out too. Also, if you're a grown adult trying to cancel them, just pack it up and admit that you're jealous that two teenagers have accomplished more in a year than you have in your whole career. Anyways, after getting severe brain damage from seeing people reach so far they dislocated their arms, I went back to sleep, and in my dream, I was walking around an empty abandoned and street in the dark when I saw a giant snail and it started screaming eat me eat me and I ran into the nearest house and closed the garage door and just when I thought I was safe I felt something slimy on my arm and I heard a voice say it's time for you to escort go <laughs> I don't know if you've seen those comments on TikTok of beautiful women asking if there are any boys here, but today I remembered I am a boy, so I decided to investigate and saw that she was asking me to go to her bio. So I clicked the link in her bio and it instantly froze my iPad and I couldn't close the app or anything until a thing popped up asking for my phone number and credit card number to fix it. And so obviously I was like, thank God, a solution. So I grabbed my credit card from my wallet and typed it in, but then after I did that, my iPad fully shut off and started smoking. But I was like, okay, thank God they reminded me what my credit card number is so i went to the apple store to go replace all my apple products that are now fried but i got distracted and tried to make the wallpapers minions kissing and i played some random rats dancing on all the iphones but then an employee yelled at me so i fled with no iphone and now i'm trying to catch a bird so i can use it as a carrier pigeon to talk to people since i have no electronic devices left do you ever wonder how it went down for the first person to ever get their ear pierced like how did that happen was it just like uh <laughs> You like the new piercing? Look, we're matching. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. What the hell is a piercing? This is a this is a stabbing. <laughs> no bitch, you got this is gonna be the next biggest thing in Pangea. Okay, sure, but why my ear? Why not literally any other part of my body? <gasps> uh Ooga Booga, what are you doing? Oh my god, that's literally worse. <gasps> Wait, do you want one too? <laughs> what? Uh, no, no, no. Today, I went to the airport with a pregnancy test because I want to go to Paris, but to fly there, you need to take a test. However, the website didn't specifically say COVID test, so I thought I'd try bringing a pregnancy test to see what would happen. And if that doesn't work, I also did a DNA test, which told me I'm anemic, which is of no surprise to me because every time I stand up for two oh. seconds, I... <laughs> Anyways, I pulled up to the airport and pulled out the test, but I remembered what you have to do for a pregnancy test. So I snuck away into the bathroom and looked for an empty stall, and then when I got in, I took out the test and put it under some water instead of pee because I'm not a maniac. And then I waited a bit for 
the line to show up and once it said i was negative i brought it up to the gate and gave them the test and my passport and uh they let me on the flight to paris and i was like no way that actually worked and then i realized she probably just saw my vaccination card and that's all you need instead of a test so anyways i got on my flight and now uh i'm in paris and i got one pregnancy test left so if you're my baby mama whose name rhymes with yendaya my phone number is everyone <laughs> So I don't know if you saw, but Little Nos X released these new Nike shoes that have a drop of real human blood in them. But I thought the colors were cute, so I ordered a pair of them. And while I was waiting around for them to arrive, I saw a lot of Karens were mad about it. And I was trying to figure out why, because having spare human blood on you at all times would be so helpful. Like if I was ever, I don't know, walking back from Taco Bell and a Toyota Prius smashes into me. And I'm lying on the ground like, dang, this is kind of awkward. Also, I'd probably be dying to need a blood transfusion. In that moment, I could just pop my shoe off and use my shoe blood and be completely fine. Then I could grab my food that I dropped from being hit by a car and find a nice bench to eat my taco on. Until I realize I'm currently on church property and I'm wearing my Lil Nas X Satan shoes and uh oh. Valentine's Day is in exactly one month. And I'm not letting you be sad and single like me. So, I made a list of three ways you can easily get a bang. The first and best method is to search up their Spotify or Apple Music and look at what their top songs are. And then you can take their top songs and put it on your story and pretend like you have the same music taste. Then they'll see it and you can tell them, why yes, I love a pilot's license by Olivia Mosquito. The second method is to buy a billboard asking your crush out, but that's kind of expensive. So, finally, the third method is to post TikToks in front of your house, making sure the street sign is visible in the background. Then when you get home, I just like to leave the door unlocked and post things that would really attract some new friends. This will invite plenty of new people to come to your house and meet you. Like there's this mysterious hooded figure that took all my stuff yesterday. I considered it a Valentine's gift from me to them. And I think we might have a it's spark between us. Away. Today, I ate 23 gummy vitamins, and I got the brilliant idea to go buy an ostrich so I can recreate that scene from the movie Rango, where they ride the ostriches into the sunset. But then I was wondering to myself, are ostriches even legal? And I looked it up, and yeah, you can literally own an ostrich in California. So, I started calling places, asking for ostriches. Yeah, I'm happy. If I gave you a half-used Starbucks gift card, could I buy an emu with it? No, you cannot. Anyways, I finally found a place three hours away called Ostrich Land, and I went on a little road trip. Now, as I was traveling to Ostrich Land, I thought about all the pets I've had so far, such as my crusty-eyed white dog, the grocery store crab that I ended up releasing into the ocean, slash accidentally sacrificing when the wave came and killed it, and my praying mantis that I fed cockroaches to every single night. Anyways, we finally arrived at Ostrich Land, and it turned out the ostriches are seven feet tall! I thought ostriches were like chicken's eyes! Ah, crap, we're out of time on TikTok, but if you want to see me vlog my ostrich purchase, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. I was making some pink sauce and pickles pasta and wanted some seasoning as a finishing touch. But I accidentally grabbed a jar of catnip thinking it was oregano and, and didn't notice until I woke up from a nap to meowing outside my window. And when I opened the door, I saw 40 cats outside my house and I thought it was the greatest day of my life until I met this musty stray who smelled like Fritos and he showed me this really cool trick called bite. And I thought, well, now I have rabies. So I scrambled to find someone to pee on the wound to neutralize it. But after that didn't work, I realized that's what you do for a jellyfish thing and not rabies. So I went to the pharmacy to see if I could find some medication for the bite, but I'm in Japan, so I just translated some medications and found this one that Google Translate says was rabies control. So I took it, and after a couple hours, my stomach started growing, and I realized it was babies control. And I was like, oh my god, the birth control malfunction made me fucking pregnant? Nah, I'm not pregnant, I just gained 10 pounds, because... Today, I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship, and I felt like throwing up until she replied with, I'm in Lisbon. And then she sent the, um, Portuguese flag, I think. I don't know, I'm not good at geometry. But anyways, I wanted to surprise her, so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon, Portugal. So, I packed up my stuff and went to the airport, and it was a 30-hour journey, but it was in the name of love. And when I landed, I realized I should probably get her something as a gift, so I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section, and I thought, mm, who would want to suck on feet? Oh, me. So I bought them, and opened up the box, and ate every last foot and they tasted like strawberries i don't know why i was expecting foot flavor not that that's what i wanted but anyways i got the bright idea to take all the popsicle sticks and make a little fun diy bracelet out of them with hearts on it so i did just that and then the next day i was gonna give my crush the bracelet so i went to dm her and asked her to meet up and realized she said i'm a lesbian i'm a lesbian Today, I threw away all my electronics so I could join the Amish and live a simple life. But after about 10 minutes, I got really bored of harvesting wheat and apples and wanted to watch a good old YouTube video. But I didn't have any devices to watch YouTube on, so I obviously walked over to the YouTube headquarters. And when I got there, I managed to walk right in and I found an empty room with a TV in it so I could watch a few videos from my... 
personal collection. Anyways, after I had cured my boredom, I left the room and raided the YouTube fruit counter and grabbed an orange and an apple and a DVD copy of the videos I watched. But when I finally got home, I realized I can't play this because I don't have a record player. <laughs> but I looked around my room and saw an old radio speaker thing and popped the CD in it just so I could listen to the audio and imagine the video in my mind. But when it started playing, it sounded like it was coming from outside my house and that's when I realized I had it set to broadcast. And I ran outside to see every radio in the vicinity was playing. <laughs> Today I went to the movie theater an hour early because I'm half Caucasian and I wanted to see the new Spider-Man for the 30th time. But when I sat down, I noticed that they had QR codes for their overpriced food menus. So I got the intrusive thought to quickly run home and change all the QR codes to moaning sounds. So when I got home, I designed a bunch of fake stickers and printed them off with QR codes. So when you scan them, they play this. Anyways, I grabbed the stickers and drove back to the theater and stuck them over the top of the original ones. And as people trickled into the theater and the movie started, and they started scanning the codes for the menu, I suddenly began to hear... And then people would quickly hide their phones and try and turn it off. And it got to the point where they had to stop the movie. So anyways, I left and went for sushi. And when I got there and sat at the table, I noticed that this restaurant also has QR codes for their menu. And I had some stickers left over, so I carefully placed them on top of the old QR codes. And then I looked back at the dude behind me as he scanned his and... Anyways, my sushi was very delicious. 9 out of 10. I was trying to sell my kidneys on the black market when I got an ad for Shein Eats, and apparently they sell food now. So I ordered some Mexican food because I was really hungry. But when it arrived, it came in what looked like a reused tissue box, and it had a fragile sticker, but it was looking more like a burrito bowl at this point. Anyways, I compared it to the picture in the ad, and it looked nothing like it. But the worst part is there was corn in it, and I'm allergic. And I was beyond mad, so I looked at the shipping label, and it said it was shipped all the way from China. So you know what I did? I was on that next flight to China, and after I boarded the plane next to the world's biggest Facebook mom with this suitcase, the food was actually pretty good, a little bit better than Shein's. But anyways, when I landed, I remembered it was the Olympics here in Beijing, so I decided to go to that instead of getting revenge on Shein. Happy Valentine's Day. Aww. Today, my Mima told me that she bought an NFT, and I was like, Mima, you just asked me if Mark Zuckerberg was my girlfriend. How do you know what an NFT is? So anyways, I was using one of those head massagers when I got a knock at the door, and when I answered, no one was there except for a box with a towel in it and some noodles with a note that said, NFT, noodly fun towel. And it wasn't even fun, it was soaking wet in some mysterious liquid, and I was about to put it away in my closet when I got the idea that... I could actually make it into an NFT and get some use out of it. So I made some room and I took a picture of it and made it look all pretty and I minted it on Bubble House and made it free for a limited time. And I emailed her back and told her to go claim one before they're all gone. And even her bingo club can get one and even you. And we can play bingo together on Bubble House with my meme on her bingo group. So I've always wondered, what would happen if you put a Tide Pod in your dishwasher instead of, like, the dish soap pod thing? Like, would it explode, or, like, what would happen? So today, I decided to sacrifice my Android phone to record it. And I turned the flash on and put it in my dishwasher. And then once it was recording inside there, I closed it up and started the dishwasher on the low cycle. But after a few minutes, it started shaking a lot. And I noticed that there was water leaking and dripping out the bottom. So I panicked, and I canceled it, and I opened it up. And I took the phone out, and somehow it survived and was still working. So I played the video to see what happened, and... Every time you're not running, Ed Sheeran gets closer. I woke up this morning and checked the calendar and remembered, oh, it's my birthday. And then I checked the mail and no one sent me anything, and not even like a letter. And half my friends forgot to wish me happy birthday, but it's okay. There's no time for self-pity because I'm going to get myself a present. So I grabbed my laptop and I went on Louis Vuitton's website and I looked for the most expensive thing that they have for sale. And it turns out they sell an artichoke looking chair for $103,000. So I added it to my cart and then it asked me to pay for it. So I typed in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 420 for the expiry date and Six, six, six. For the security code. And like a minute later, I got a confirmation email. And then right after that, the doorbell rang. So I ran downstairs and there was a bunch of boxes. And I started screaming because someone out there is going to get charged $100,000. So anyways, I'm not having a party because of COVID. So if you can think of any other way to celebrate, please let me know. Because for now, I'm just sitting in my artichoke chair, eating a mashed potato bowl and watching my mantis for hours on end.